Oh, it's <laughs> like you're having a good time. Hello. 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 The apocalypse is upon us. Love. Abby just smiled at me. Wow. I'm a little speechless, and I'm never at a loss for words, because that clearly means that she's just thrilled that we beat Kathy last week. I'm going to run out and see if I can find something for Chloe to wear. How are the two of you doing? I still have a doctor. That's OK. Give it time. It's been a week since Christy and I have fought. I just feel like Christy and I went to a place that I didn't like. That was our question My daughter the whole time. My daughter has a solo. What do I have to be upset that about? That was our question. Maybe it's you that's upset. Stop lying. That I'll have, why I'll have my attorney it? write you a letter and sue you. I don't think friends treat friends that way. Come on, let's go, let's go. Come on. Shake the leg, bring it in. This is cause for celebration. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Woohoo! The Abby Lee Dance Company took back ownership. We beat the crap out of the crabby apple. They were flawless. And in first place, bad girls. They danced together as one. Outstanding representatives of the ALDC. Did not feel good. Hey, hi. How are you? Good. Good to see you again. Good to see you. What's up? Glad you're back. We got a warm welcome from Abby. We've been busy bees, but glad to be back here. Without further ado, I'm going to get to the pyramid. First, Asia. You weren't here. That's where you end up. She went away to LA for the week. She did a television show and also some print work for a magazine. I can't blame the kid, but I also can't put her on top of the pyramid. And next on the pyramid, Nia. In the group, you lag behind a little bit. I don't want you to be the weak link. I beg to differ. Nia pulled it off. She looked great as one of four in that whole group number, and they won against the candy apples. I don't think she deserves to be seventh. Next, Kendall. Kendall, you were a part of an award-winning group. You did a good job. During rehearsal, you need to be stronger. And Paige, you were second overall high score. Usually, second is the first to lose. But I think you had a great performance. You should be very proud of yourself. Moving on up, we have Mackenzie. Mackenzie, I have big plans for you this week. You're up this high on the pyramid because that's where I expect you to be. That's how well you need to perform. You gotta give me more. Next, we have Chloe and Maddie. Chloe and Maddie, two professionals out there. It looked like you could have done that dance eight times a week. So congratulations to the two of you. They did a duet. They danced like seasoned pros out there. They were seamless. It was like one person was dancing out there on stage. On top of the pyramid hey, Brooke. is Brooke. <laughs> it's about time you dance like you're 15 years old. Brooke danced with my senior company, and that's a pretty big task. Hi. And she went out there and performed just as well as they did. She did an outstanding job. So we will be attending Powerhouse Dance Competition in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We have a very serious, if you will, group routine. The group routine is entitled Living With The Ribbon. Now, you are all familiar with a pink ribbon. People every day are living with cancer. They're beating the odds. They're surviving. Melissa, you okay? Why did you get choked up there? Because my mother died of cancer. My mom died of a really awful, I mean, she died in nine months, and it was awful. It is. My mom, she had cancer, and it was an awful cancer. She went really fast. Um, cancer just sucks. <laughs> and I think that we're all affected by it in some way. People are living with cancer, children are living with cancer. They're surviving. Both of my grandfathers died from cancer, and my dad actually has cancer right now. He has prostate cancer. So doing the dance, living with a ribbon, really means a lot to me. 
This is a piece that I've wanted to do. We're going to do it this week. It's very intricate choreography. Mackenzie, Asia, you are not in the group routine. You have solos. Asia, it's entitled Too Hot to Handle. Mackenzie, you will also be doing a solo. It's entitled Old West. Maddie, you will be doing a solo this weekend. The name of your routine is Be Anything. And my last solo will be going to Chloe. Chloe, the name of your solo is called You Can, because you can get better. You can listen to your mother and do what she wants you to do, or you can listen to me and do what I want you to do. Moms, you're dismissed. Oh, wait, one more thing. Moms, what happened last week that took my senior company, who are very focused, and caused them to look up there? You're full of oh, Kelly, and you know oh, it. Well, maybe you should get fined. If I see any of that behavior, you will leave this studio, and your child goes with you. Have I made myself perfectly clear? Yes? All righty. You're dismissed. Ladies, spread apart. Let's warm up. You don't really need to pull her so hard. Just look like it. Yes, go. Tinsica, you gotta go with her. Now, my dad died a very, very tragic death of cancer. The odds are starting to change, and that's what we're doing. You can live with cancer, and you can beat the odds. Any illness. Because the things that you take for granted. And exactly. You, you just, and then once it's gone, that's when you really miss it. And so, that's good, that's a powerful message. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, my mom's been gone 15 years. You know, it's still so hard. I think about her. Ooh. I, you know, I have yeah, pictures yeah. of her. She's in my life still every day. Rook, plie arabesque, and you're, you're getting pulled towards Paige. I've decided to use elastic. The elastic is covering up Brooke. It's wrapped around her. It's wound through her, just like a cancerous disease. As the choreography unfolds, you see that Brooke loses the elastic. She comes out of it. She fights the disease. And at the end, she's free. All right, you're dismissed. Go. How come you guys are not sitting over here? Because that's odd for me. Well, we had a major blowout. With Abby? No, yeah. it wasn't with Abby, and that's the problem. We really need to not fight amongst ourselves. Christy and Kelly got into a really heated argument that got really ugly. You're not a good friend. I won't be your friend, ever. <laughs> you, Kelly, <laughs> you. The friendship kind of disintegrated before our eyes. So it's not better, or it's OK? You're just sitting apart. Yeah, that's their relationship. I just need to step back for a while and see, really, where we're at. I have never done anything like this before. This week, I have something crazy planned for Maddie and Chloe. This is unprecedented. This will finally shut those mothers up, especially Christy. Remember, it's the same choreography exactly to the T that we give. Now, what the child does with the choreography is up to them, OK? I got it. I still got it. I've decided that Maddie and Chloe should do the same exact solos. Why? Because I am sick and tired of hearing Christy go on and on about the choreography. If you want to do what Maddie's doing, game on. It takes a heartbeat to bring someone back to life. And then you feel that it's all been worthwhile. Voices I'm going to go see where the other kids are, see what they're doing. Maybe they're doing homework. Here, come with me. Come see if we can find them. Rush your right, left leg through the arabesque. Pop your knee up to releve and throw your hands back. OK, I got to know. I got to know. Are you guys just not talking, talking? Or is it like, OK? Or you just got so heated that there's no turning back of what is said. Is that like how it's going? I think that's it. There's no apology or sorry no, I said that? No, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of like fine with I'm just kind of taking a break right now. 
I left it in her corner. And I'm leaving it in her corner. I'm not begging someone, like, please like me, please like me. I thought our friendship was worth more than that. But it is. Well, which has, it's you just feel that way. Room. I feel that way. Clearly, Kelly doesn't feel that way. And I don't want to be like that. And right then, I said to myself, she's not a best friend. Wait, play yours. Wait, what happened? It's the same. It is the same. We're in the den, and Maddie decides to play her solo music. And I'm like, whoa, that's Chloe's solo music. So then it finally hits me that Abby is giving the two of them the exact same solo. Cute, Mia. Why do I have the same Why do we have the same dance? It's fine. I was just so confused because I'm not used to doing the same exact dance. Wait, why do we have the same song, but it's different names? So that we wouldn't catch on. This week, I think Abby decided to teach me a lesson more than anyone. So Chloe and Maddie are given the exact same music, the exact same choreography, the exact same costume, because I always say, let's even the playing field and see where the chips fall. Oh, my God. Same choreography, same song, same, same costume, costume, same dance. Did we learn them the same day? Yeah. You guys totally sure you have the exact same number? Yeah. Well, it depends on who Abby choreographed it for. Because they have different strengths. I'm always complaining that Chloe has lesser choreography than Maddie. So Abby's saying, you know what? Here, do Maddie's choreography. And I think that she made sure that it was Maddie's dance. So is Maddie concerned with having the same routine? No, I think she's confused. I don't think she's concerned, not at all. No. Like, it's never happened before. Oh, you know, never say never at the ALDC. I think she's just saying the better dancer is going to win regardless you can strip all this other stuff away. When it comes down to it, it's going to be X, whatever the X factor happens. It makes a very uncomfortable situation for both girls. And for all of us, I mean, just going into the green room afterwards, one of them's going to win and one of them isn't. This is Chloe's chance to show exactly. Abby. You know what? You say Matt is the best sure. every week. Well, Magic when you combo. give them the same amount of time and the same choreography and the same dance, look what can happen. I don't like how Abby has Chloe and Maddie doing the same solos this week. I just feel like no matter what happens, one of the kids is going to be upset. And I don't think that's fair. This is as equal of a level playing field you're ever going to get. I want Asia and Mackenzie to watch one another during rehearsal so they can see what they're up against. All right, Asia, you're up. Hey, hey. Come over. Oh, shoes. Can you, shoes, and then come on over here. Christy Ray gets to go down and watch Asia do her solo. We don't get to do that with our kids. It's just not fair. Nice, nice. Oh. Here we come, here we come. Oh, here we go. I hope you get to sit in there and watch your kid and get, I don't want get to all that. that. Yeah, but you know what? You should. She's competing head to head with Asia. I don't want to sit down. You should get the same treatment she's getting. Nope, I'm fine with. Just the treatment I'm getting. I don't need to be in there. I like to look at it up here. I think we are incognito. We're in black with sunglasses. Really, no one will ever know. Both of Melissa's kids are doing solos this week, and Maddie is going head to head with Chloe. Of course, Melissa's going to do everything that she can to give Maddie the edge this week. Melissa will lose her if both of her kids lose. Our plan is to prove what we have known all along, that Maddie gets extra private time. We know it's going on. We need proof. We have to videotape it, because Melissa always says, oh, my kids don't learn it. And every week, we see it, but we never have evidence. I am 
so sick of Melissa sitting upstairs and lying to us every week. Oh, my kids didn't learn their solos. They just happen to know by osmosis which move comes next. No, they happen to know which move comes next because they already learned their dance. All right. We know what's going on. All right, let's do it. How do you think those kids go in there and know everything? It's not because they're like just super geniuses. They, they learn it. <laughs> Wait, look. Gia and Janine's cars are here. Janine always choreographs wow. Mackenzie, and Gia, Gia does, does Maddie. Maddie. <gasps> they're, both. they're both learning their dances. I knew that Maddie and Mackenzie were inside getting extra rehearsal time, extra privates, and you know what? Melissa just doesn't play fair. Or what am I recording? Just the sound, or do you want me to? No, I want you to get in that studio. I'll stand watch. Jill likes to get to the bottom of things. She likes to know everything that's going on. So clearly, if there's a secret, Jill's the one who's going to unearth it. Kiwi, kiwi, kiwi. I got it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, they're in my pocket. Come on, it's a partner in crime like Kelly. I have you. Did you get video? I got video. Who? Maddie. Oh. All right, so you obviously figured out that you're doing the same routine. When you go to an audition, aren't you all given the same combination? Yes. And that's really the main reason why I did this exercise. This week, I'm giving Maddie and Chloe the exact same solo. This is going to prepare them for a career in the professional dance world. Sometimes, when you win, I hear a whole bunch from your mom. And what I hear is, well, if Chloe would have Maddie's choreography, if they would pay that much attention to my Chloe, if this, if that, it's one excuse after another. And some of them are pretty darn offensive to me. It's do or die time. Christy, it's time for you to put up and shut up. Chloe, turn around, get in front of the door. She's not letting them watch each other. It's like the Blair Witch Project. Let the body and the head go with that strata leap. What's the purpose? You know, if she wants them to be motivated, they need to watch each other and motivate one another. Finish the movement through the arms. All right. It takes a moment to break a butterfly on a This is weird. That's I know. Weird. I'm sorry. So to see them both working on a solo at the same time. The judges will be like, didn't I just see this dance? This is a toss up, and I think both of them want this bad. They're both dancing great. Good. Is the reason why you're so quiet is because you don't have any complaints or is it because you're satisfied? I have some other things I going think you're on. preoccupied in okay. your mind. Okay. 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 I really do have a lot on my mind, and she's sitting right to the left of me. You're dismissed. Thank you very much. Grab a drink and bring the group in. OK, girls. Well, where's the pink ribbon? I need that, like, right now. Now, you would think the moms would want to help out and get the ribbon to the kids. But no, it's still not ready. I have a little job for my two favorite dance moms. You want me to go ask them to find the white elastic, find the light pink dye, and dye it. Give it to Christy and Kelly. All right. Number six. No, okay, so not from me, from Abby. You're Abby, she just wants um, this Christy so. and Kelly to go downstairs. All right, let's go. Wait, do we need instructions? Ew. I think we could figure it out. Christy and Kelly in the same room together, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I think it's great that Christy and Kelly were picked to go down because I think maybe that will kind of break yeah. the ice. Well, hopefully they are using this time to it just is. talk or laugh or let go and it's not so intense. I think it's, what, been a week? I think they want it to go away. I really do. Oh, I don't. I don't think it'll ever be the same. Hey, moms, you want to come on down here? I have the costumes. And I want to talk about the routine a little bit, what's going to go down this weekend. Come on. Oh, they're very sheer. 
listen to me. How many people here know somebody that's died of cancer? Is that a painful thing? Is it a loss of dignity? Do you know what that means, girls? You're not in control of your body. Yes, you feel this big. How many of you think you can lift your dad? I did that. I had to do that. My dad had a brain tumor. He had a seizure and collapsed on the bathroom floor. It's not pretty. And you're all very pretty. Right now, people are living with the ribbon. People are living with cancer every day. And that's what you're showing. That's what the dance is about. Are you crying because I'm sad? Who, who, who passed away? Well, my dad, when I wasn't born, but it was like a long time ago, my dad, his dog Diablo died. It was just so hard for him. His what? His, his daughter? <laughs> Dogs do get cancer. It's horrible, I know. Let's wipe away the tears. Let's think positively. We win the dance. Maybe we'll win the cure for cancer, all right? Let's go. dance competition in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Stay close, ladies. I can't explain how important it is for the girls to win today. They're coming off a big victory, and they need to keep the momentum going. All right, girls, you know the drill. While I'm watching Kinsey. Lots of energy for the top. What I'm really thinking right now is, can you be cute all your life? Can that cute factor last? I don't think so. Look right at the judge, like, come on. Tighten that supporting knee longer. It has to be up there longer. OK, shall we? I'm really nervous for Mackenzie. Abby always says that Asia has more energy than Mackenzie. I just hope Mackenzie proves Abby wrong today. OK, so do a bow. There's nothing to worry about. Coming to the stage now would be entry number 17. Entry number 17 is in the mini solo division. Here is Mackenzie with Old West. Mackenzie did great today. She had a lot of energy and great technique. It's going to be a tough act to follow. Mackenzie's going to have to watch out because Asia's going to be on fire. It's going to be too hot to handle. Those judges are going to love it. Coming to the stage now, we've got Asia number 18. Here is Asia with Old West. Here is Asia 
Asia came out there smoking. She just grabs that audience. This performance is probably one of her best ones. Asia, why were you on stage singing the lyrics? I thought Asia's dancing was outstanding, but the lip syncing? Come on. You ruined your entire number because everyone was looking at what you were saying. I even motioned to you from my seat. Asia, every goal and obstacle we conquer, you throw yourself back two steps. She told me that I lip sync almost half the song. Miss Abby can yell at me. She's not going to make me cry. Mackenzie, did you watch Asia from the wings? Yes. What'd you learn? <laughs> I have bigger and much more important things to worry about than lip syncing. Maddie and Chloe's solos are up soon. This is a big, big moment for both of them. Your elbows. OK, come here. Roll around and step up. Roll that way. This. This. Chloe, you're up. Big smile there. Your forehead a little bit. Make sure your four starch relevé on that foot. This is Chloe's moment. This is her opportunity to step out there and take that spotlight. Ladies, make me proud. Okay. Chloe's ready. She knows what an opportunity it is, and she knows what it means to prove to Abby that she is someone to be reckoned with. Coming up now is entry number 19 in the junior solo division. Here's Chloe with You Can. It takes a moment to break a butterfly on a wheel. That's when you hear an angel cry. Chloe danced beautifully. And if I were Melissa and Maddie, I'd be worried. I'm a little concerned about this dance because I really want to win. Even though Chloe's my friend, I still want to just make Miss Abby proud. Up next is entry number 20 in the junior solo division. Here's Maddie <laughs> with Be Anything. She did dance beautifully, but I think she could have done better. Oh my god, so bad. All of them. I think you won. Well, well, well. That was an experience. Do you think that this experiment that you're doing, do you think it worked? Hey, I'm thrilled that Chloe could remember the dance. Abby, who do you think will come out on top? Well, I don't know. It's in the judges' hands. I tried to find out who the judges were. You know, 
I know Abby said she gave the girls an even playing field, but I know what I'm sitting on. I know what I have, evidence of Maddie having an extra private. We're at the studio one afternoon, and we have Maddie on videotape learning her solo. Don't even go there with me, Jill. It was the same day. You're, Melissa, you're lying. You're but lying. Jill, like, Jill and I found your daughter learning her dance. You know nothing. All we're saying is that you're known to lie. Everybody here deserves the truth. That is the truth. What difference does it make? You all know damn well Maddie can learn to dance in one hour and go out there and do it. Save yourself the aggravation. OK. She has it, and she has it right now. I don't have time to worry about this solo drama. It's done. It's old news. I need to get everybody ready for the group number. Sluppy feet, why is everyone looking at the ground? Paige, you have to do the whole step. Stretch the back of those knees. Come on. Right there, on the saute and forth. Dagaje, get your feet down into the ground. They point right down. I hope the girls take this routine very seriously. It means a lot to me personally and lots of people in the audience. I talked about my dad, and I talked about a disease that can be very ugly. People live with cancer every day, and other people die from cancer every day. And people put up a good fight. So let's go out there, let's fight, let's work together. All right, let's go. Moms, we're going. We'll see you there. Brooke, Paige, come here. I want to talk to you for a second. You do know that Papa Coon had cancer, right? So when you are on stage, do this dance for him. OK? Hey. OK? Do it for Papa Coon. OK? I told the girls to dance for the grandpap, Papa Coon. He's living with cancer right now, and I want them to go out there and think about how much he loves them while they're out there dancing. Taking the stage right now is entry number 87 in the junior small group category. Here they are with Living with the Ribbon. My girls went out, and they dedicated this dance to my dad. And I just know that he would be so happy to be here to see them. And he'd be proud of them. I think Pappy would be really happy with your performance today. It's hard to see Kelly crying, thinking about the hard times she went through when her father had prostate cancer. And what really hit home to me is that people come and go so quickly in your life. And, you know, I love Kelly. She's like a sister. And even if you don't always like your sister, you always love your sister. Mm -hmm. I know. We need to just get past this. It might not be exactly the same as it was before, but life's too short to lose friendships. time for our junior small group division. This is a really big dance for us, and a first place win would really mean a lot to us. In second place, entry number 86 from Z Company, he's my son. And in first place, entry number 87 from Abby Lee Dance Company, living with the women. Woo! Give him a round of applause. I think this was a great day for the Abby Lee Dance Company. We were victorious. We won the overall high score, and I'm very proud of the kids. It is now time for our divisional overalls. 
In second place, from Abby Lee Dance Company, entry number 17, Old West. Mackenzie got second place in her solo. I know she's disappointed, and she really wanted first place. And in first place, entry number 18 from Abby Lee Dance Company, Too Hot to Handle. Asia showed that today she was the better dancer. Give them a round of applause. The Elite High Point Awards for the Junior Division in the Junior Solo category. Third place, entry number 15 from Tiffany and Company, Escape. At this point, I really don't know who I think is going to win. I think they both did things very well, and I think they both did things that could have been better. Second place, entry number 20 from Abby Lee Dance Company, Be Anything. I think it was probably a tight call. It doesn't mean that one dancer is better than the other. And in first place, junior solo in the Junior Division Elite High Point Awards, entry number 19 from Abby Lee Dance Company, you win. I'm so happy for Chloe. This is a huge boost to her confidence, and it just proves to Abby once and for all that Chloe is a force to be reckoned with. Give him a round of applause. Abby said it in front of the other moms. I'm surprised Chloe won. And she said it right in front of everyone else. I think Maddie got really upset whenever she found out that she didn't win. But I thought they both did a fabulous job. So I don't think it matters who the winner is. Don't be sad. I'm not sad. Do you not see me smiling? No, I wasn't. Paige, did you not see me smiling the whole award? Sorry. You were great. I mean, I thought your, your dance was wonderful. It was beautiful. I mean, it's, you know, it's all good. Hey, congratulations. Hey. And we had a goof. One of our judges, they gave Chloe a 99.10. She actually had a 96.6 because they gave her a 27.5 in a category that only had 25 points. That means that the overall winner would have been Maddie. Congratulations, Maddie. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Yes, I'm sorry. That, hey, you know, things happen. All, All right. right. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Woo -hoo! Everybody, congratulations on the group. Maddie and Chloe, congratulations on being great sports. Mistakes happen. The director of the competition told us that there was a mistake in the scores in that um, I didn't really win and Maddie won, and I was a little upset, but I was really happy for Maddie. Mackenzie, what are you doing there with the hairdo? What did I tell you? Never leave home without your bows. Are you kidding me that it just so happened that Chloe and Maddie's scores were the only ones out of the entire competition with 80-some routines that were incorrect? Are you kidding? So, Abby, how did you discover the discrepancy between the 30-point and the 25-point? No, I didn't. That came to me. I guess the judges said, there's a problem. We have a problem. I'm sorry. Yes. You OK? Yes. I, I stole your score uh, sheets. Yes. I kept them with me. And I wanted to say, once again, you know, this doesn't happen that often at all, but I wanted to say thank you for bringing it to our attention. Oh. That's all. Chloe are not here. They were suspended last week. 
we need Christy and Chloe as part of the team. They are part of the team. And without them, the, the team's not complete. So, Kelly, have you talked to Christy? No, she won't call me. I hope she comes back. Have you talked to Christy? You know, I talked to her for a few moments it. yesterday. Yeah. Just for a little bit, not very long. Did yeah, she mention sure. my name at all? Kelly? She did not. It's going to be really awkward this week because, you know, I tried calling Christy, I tried texting her, she didn't answer me back. So, like, I don't even know what to say to her. OK, you're sure you want to go back in there? I want to walk into that studio like I want a stiletto jammed in my eyeball. But we're back because Chloe wants to dance, and I don't do this for myself. I do it for my daughter. Hello. Hi. May I speak with you? In private? <laughs> well, look who's here. Well, Abby, since you're not going to speak to me, I'm going to speak at you. Chloe is here because she's a member of the team. I am sorry for my behavior in the hallway and at the competition. And I have talked to the competition. I've apologized. I've spoken to the director. And you should in no way, shape, or form hold that against Chloe. <laughs> or at least I would think you should know that. I would think your mother would have taught you better. OK, I'm going to go in, because this is my job, and I am to be here. She had nerve talking about my mother. She ain't even my mother. Hey. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you Hello. doing? I heard you were talking to Abby. No, I was talking at Abby. She won't speak to me. Oh. Sometimes it's better that way. That woman thinks that I'm going to give her the time of day. How dare her even walk into this studio? She has big like a man, because that's what she is. She is disgusting. Where have you been? What have you been up to? I, I don't know. We'll talk upstairs. No need for applause. Let's go. <laughs> when I come back in the studio, everyone's really excited to see me, except Kelly. And you would think that Kelly should have been the one who's most excited to see me. All right. You know, they told me that Detroit was a tough city. Well. It was. You weren't the big winners. You got beat. Your champion and winner will be top of the world, entry number 89. You represent Katie Third place. Kathy is a fake and a phony. She calls herself a choreographer. She's an embarrassment to my vocation. I think the loss to Kathy's all-boy team was tough on Abby. To be honest with you, I think she did not like losing to a group of all boys. And then we had a duet that I can't really talk about because it didn't happen. I pulled the duet. If your mother is out of control, you don't dance. And Abby, that is fine. I do want it noted on your record that I was defending my daughter because you were being insensitive about her health issues. That's what my disagreement with you was. So let's just say, I'm not putting up with it anymore. We've had a member of the team suspended. You all know what suspended is. It's like the last chance before dismissal. Let's move on to the pyramid. Chloe, obviously you were not on the pyramid. On the bottom, Nia, you should have expected to be there. Paige kind of got thrown under the bus with the duet. Next, we have Kendall. Now, Kendall, you were given a solo. You didn't even make the top 10. Alexandra, below zero. Do I just keep giving you a solo? No. Next, Mackenzie. I told you I wasn't going to put you in the groups anymore because you are the weak link. This time, I thought you were excellent. And moving next, Brooke. It was the first time you were officially on the team. I thought the parts that you did in the routine that were your solo spots were excellent. But I need you still to be more of a role model. Understood? And? At the top of the pyramid, 
Maddie, you have not had a solo for weeks. Your highest scoring solo tonight will be Maddie with quicksand. It's tough getting there. It's even tougher staying there, and you know that. We will be attending Intensity Dance in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And <laughs> eight. Everybody will be in the group dance. Now, the group routine is a contemporary piece. The name of the routine is Money is the Root of All Evil. I really don't know about the group routine this week, Money is the Root of All Evil. I don't really equate money with evil. Abby, yes. Money, no. Moms, the costumes are emerald green, like the color of money, or envy. And they're going to need some work. We need headpieces. We need trim. And you'll be using actual real money on the costumes. I don't know about this idea about putting real money on these costumes. We spend enough money on costumes as it is. This is going to be an expensive week. Maddie, obviously, a solo is going to you. And the other solo is going to Brooke. This is Brooke's first solo for this competition season. And Brooke needs to show Abby that she wants to be part of this team. I think she needs to go out there and show her that she still loves to dance and she wants to be here. We have a lot of work to do. Moms, go ahead and go upstairs. Spread apart. We're doing a whole warm up. Now, ladies, think about this. It's bluesy. So think of being in a speakeasy or a nightclub. Money is the root of all evil is the name of our routine this week. Now, the routine is contemporary, but it has a little bit of flamboyancy to it. And we're going to use real money all over the costumes. The faces have to come through, and we need to bring it all, or we'll be counting the chump change on the way home. Make it bigger. Five, six, seven, go. Da, 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 da. Don't steal Maddie's post. Of course, our kids do not go to speakeasies or no, bars. I don't know bars. what a speakeasy bars. OK, a speakeasy, also called a blind pig or blind tiger, is an establishment that illegally sells alcoholic beverages. Such establishments came into prominence in the United States during the period known as Prohibition. I don't 1920, know any that are illegal to 1933. <laughs> oh, I'm not too At one point, Kelly, alcohol oh, was prohibited. No. So that's why our kids have never been to a speakeasy. <laughs> Besides the fact that they are underage, and uh -huh. they wouldn't go to a bar. And there's no Nine, such thing uh, as a speakeasy. Years ago. Yeah, it doesn't exist. I have to say, you know, I wasn't here last week, and all of a sudden, like, I haven't felt more like an outsider in my life here. It was a pretty quiet week, relatively, I would say, up until Saturday. And Saturday, it was like I was in a twilight zone. It was bizarre. Jill, shut your mouth. Hey. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that, either. Get out. With you the man. are a monstrosity of evil. You're done. No duet. It was bad. I thought Saturday was just a horrendous day all around. So why weren't you answering any of my phone calls or my texts all week? You called me once, and I missed it. And I texted you a few times. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. Did I answer? No. Well, then I must not have gotten it, because I answer your texts. So why didn't you call me? I was having a bad week, and I just was waiting for you to call. And if I missed one call, then I'm sorry. Five, six, seven, go. Da, 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 in. Too late, Mackenzie. I want you to be looking to the side, the floor, the opposite direction. Oh, go ahead, chit-chat away. So what, what just went on right there? I asked her why she didn't answer my phone calls. What'd she say? She said she only got one, and I didn't leave a message. I never leave her a message. When you see that you missed the call, you normally just call back. But I'm having a bad week thing isn't cutting it. You know, I'm going to sit up here because I'm not playing games. I'm not. I'm just saying how I don't understand why you were mad at me. I was mad at you about what happened, and I was waiting for you to call me because of all this that was going on. I was just waiting for you to reach out to me because, and I did. I'm not going to fight with you about it. My feelings were hurt because you know how bad this sucks. All I wanted was a phone call from you. That's all, Kelly. When you were going through I called you every day. I did call you. On Friday. You never No, I didn't. Me. I called you Sunday at the competition. 
the day you left. Yeah, you called me and you said, oh, are you okay? I missed my partner in crime. That's all I wanted from you, Kelly. That's all. Let's go. I'll tell you what, when I left, there was tension between you, Melissa, and Abby, and Maddie, and it's like I came back, and I feel like I'm back, and everything is back to normal. Like, Maddie's featured in the dance, she's happy, Abby's pleased with her, you seem like you're back on good terms with Abby. Like, what happened there? I don't know. I mean, I, you know, argue, and then things get better. I just think it's because she knows this is her team, and she, you know, we all need each other, and she needs us. Do you us. think it's maybe because Sophia decided uh, she didn't want to be part of our team, uh, and she yeah, realized that Maddie's what she got? Yeah, and, oh, yeah. I mean, Sophia's not here anymore, and she knows that this is her team. It might be back to normal for Melissa and Maddie, but it's certainly not back to normal for Kelly and I. We're barely talking. I mean, we're not really even making eye contact. Oh, your knees bent. Paige. Mackenzie, you should be on the outside of Nia. Let's move Kendall back in and pull her up a little taller. Uh, you, girl in the front, move over to the right. You shouldn't be center. Move. Abby won't refer to Chloe by her name. She keeps calling her that girl or her or she. I mean, like, how, how belittling can you get to not even I say someone's say, name? I want to teach Chloe, you can't take anything for granted. Because even if you're gone, the show must go on. So, Chloe, if you want me to remember your name, then you need to prove it to me. Make me remember. All right, we're going to break right now. You have one more day to work on this dance, and that's it. One more day. Kel, come on. Come with me to um, go get the supplies. Will you come help me? Yeah. I'm really concerned about what's going on with Kelly and Christy. It's crazy. So I'm going to ask her to come down to the costume shop. This is my opportunity to find out what's going on between Kelly and Christy, and maybe I can help out. So, um, what's going on with you and Christy? Nothing. She still isn't talking to me. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm not. Melissa, I didn't do anything wrong. And I, and I tried it. calling her. I told her that today. Well, I tried, so I, I'm not doing it again. And I don't want to get in the middle of it, you know, but I'm just don't. trying. I don't expect you guys to get in the middle, but I, I tried calling her. She sent me to voicemail. She did not return my phone call. I'm done. It is what it is. She just has to get over it, and you didn't do anything wrong. I mean, we all have done, said things to each other to hurt each other's feelings. Exactly. So let's get on with life. OK, come on, let's go. What'd she say? She just says, girl, she doesn't even say my name. And she's being really mean to her. During rehearsal, Miss Abby really isn't acknowledging me and like saying my name, and that kind of really hurts my feelings because I'm still a person. Oh, Chloe. Abby's refusing to say Chloe's name because she feels that if she doesn't say Chloe's name, she takes away her importance. She's just doing that to hurt you. Don't give her that satisfaction, Chloe. Don't give her the power to upset you. Are you OK? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. You're my daughter. Like, come on. You got a little bit of me in ya. Buck up. Don't give her that power. Are we up? Can't forget what to do there. You screw yourself up. My solo this week is called Careless, and it's a lyrical number. Abby gave this to me because she knows I could care less about dance. So that is why I am doing this solo. <laughs> Don't devil pay it. Just hold it, pull your head through. Now come down. Watch your alignment coming down. You're not straightening that right knee. Point your feet, point your feet, your feet, your feet, your feet. Abby doesn't teach her her dance early. She doesn't give her a lot of time during rehearsal. She gives her a song called Care Less that makes Brooke feel like, I guess I should care less. It just feels like she's setting her up. I just want you to work hard and to care about whatever it is you want to do. Don't just be the average kid that falls through the cracks. Don't do anything half late. All right, you're finished. Thank you. Go ahead and rest. Old ladies need lots of rest. Am I trying to jab her a little bit? Absolutely. Brooke, do you care or could you care less? We'll see. I'm 
pretty sad that we didn't get to do the duet last weekend because we did all that work. So I definitely want to do the duet. I'm going to go in and ask Gabby if we could do the duet because there's only three numbers and there's usually four. Mia wants to go ask Miss Abby if we can do our duet this week, and I'm very terrified for her. Miss Abby can be a little scary at times. Here's my big girl doing it all on her own. Last week, Abby pulled Mia's duet right before it was about to go on, and Mia was devastated. What you are a monstrosity of evil. You want to talk about ugliness. You're done. You're done. No duet. Whatever. I'm a monstrosity of evil. Abby, give it. Abby, take it away. Mia's determined this week to get that duet back, and she's going to go to Abby herself and ask for it. I wanted to ask you if Paige, if Paige and I can do the duet this weekend. Uh, uh, Mia is asking me herself. Her mother isn't speaking for her. She's acting mature and taking matters into her own hands. Mia, that's exactly what I want to see. You've got my attention. Let me think about it. I'm not saying no. Do you understand that? Okay. Let's go. It's not a yes, it's not a no. This You're is so welcome. stressful. It's not even me not feel stressed. Thanks for meeting me. Yeah, I mean, and I try to no, text you as much as I can and check no, up I on know. you. No, I know, and you know what, Melissa? We don't get along or see eye to eye on everything. You were the first one to call me. And I was worried about you. Tonight, I'm having drinks with Christy, which is very odd, um, you know, but I have to do what I have to do. Kelly's angry with me, and I don't know why. She's stubborn. Yeah. I was like her biggest cheerleader, and I'm having a bad time. Why have I not gotten any texts? It's like you broke up. Melissa, I have been a part of this team forever. And like, this week, I feel like an outsider. I feel bad for the whole situation. You know, Melissa, we aren't always the best of friends. <laughs> oh. But thank you for thank you for meeting me. Of thank course. you. You know, I'm I, I about appreciate you. it. I think deep down, Melissa's being a better friend to me at this point than Kelly is. So you know the name of the routine is you don't know me. Do the judges know who you are? So maybe they've heard of you. Maybe they know your reputation. They think they know who you are. Oh, Maddie, we know her. Oh, yeah, Maddie, I've heard of her. No, we're trying to tell them who the real Maddie is. Maddie's solo this week is called You Don't Know Me. It's a little bit edgier for Maddie. Nice. Like, you think you know who Maddie is. Push. She's very angelic. She does these lyrical routines that are so pretty. Maddie is going to prove to everybody that they don't know who she is. She's more than you think. Hey, come on, Paige, Nia. Now remember, girls, this is the duet. You've asked me to do it. I pulled it. You've had two weeks to do this number. So it should look twice as good as Maddie's solo, twice as good as Brooke's solo. They've been doing their dances for a day. You've had an entire week. Let's go. Yesterday, Nia and Paige came to me and asked if they could do last week's canceled duet in this week's competition. I want to see them perform it before I make my final decision. Does the routine look good? I don't know, but I'm giving them the opportunity. So come on, girls, impress me. Every time you do that kick, get your leg higher. You're not thinking. That's what I'm saying. You guys want to do this? Oh, we want to do the duet. It's fun. We want to do it. You cannot go out there and look any less of a dancer than Maddie. Oh, you want both of us or just both of us? Oh, she wants both of us down. Oh, crap. I think there should be closure to last week's experience at the competition, and the girls should do the duet. I think that would be a nice way to kind of resolve the situation. I'm trying to do some Abby psychology, thinking about how you're going to approach the situation. The girls have asked me about doing the duet this weekend. So we're doing the duet? Yes. You have to do it. You're going to go out there and you're going to do it. But I explained to Nia that I pulled the duet because I cannot have that behavior go on. Like you said at Pyramid, other things have happened in the past, we can't go backwards. And I'm not going to, but I am going to go forward. And going forward, that behavior will not be tolerated. The girls came, they asked me, Paige was part of it too, they wanted to do it. 
So you know what you're getting yourselves into. You have to do it. I don't care what the results are with this competition for this duet. At this point, Mia has already won. The duet's going on stage. She's going to get to perform it. And I see maturity in Mia. They asked me to do it. Sink or swim. Hey, we're going to Florida. There's sharks. What's going on with you and Kelly? Have you had a chance to sit down and no, work it out? No, but I keep going back to when Kelly wasn't here, who was the biggest advocate for her to come back? I know. I had a bad week. I needed someone to call me, and she didn't call me. I know it's like a, a double whammy that Kelly's mad at you, because let's face it, that would be her sitting here consoling you. My feelings are hurt, because when it was Kelly in my situation, I was her biggest cheerleader. So how, where do you go from here? I mean, do you continue to not speak? That... I don't know. Last week was an extremely hard week for me and Chloe. And Melissa called me, Holly called me, Joe called me. Kelly never called me. <laughs> I don't know, I'm a, ma I'm a mess. I, I wasn't myself, I left, I came back, I felt more like myself, but like, I'm the snarky, like, bitch of the group. I'm not the crier, I'm not the emotional one and I feel so out of sorts. I really feel like an outsider this week. I think because the team went to a competition, they had all these experiences, they had some crazy fight with Kathy. You know, life went on without Christy and Chloe, and I don't think anybody really even missed us. Girls, listen up. If you want fame, you start paying right here, right now. Blood, sweat, sore muscles, palaces. We went to a competition, and not one of my students made the top 10. That's never gonna happen to the Abbey Lee Dance Company again. This is gonna be like booty camp. You're gonna walk in here and you're gonna work and you're gonna work and you're gonna work even harder the next day. The group is not where I want it to be. I know it's been a long day, but this number is nowhere near competition ready. Lock the back knee in the lunge. Oh, somebody's foot was flexed. Whoa, what is she doing there? Get up. Yo, Blondie, you were gone for a week, not a year. If Abby doesn't come around and at least give Chloe the common respect of calling her by her given name, you know, I can't say that I'm gonna sit back and just let it happen. Moms, let's go! Bring those costumes down! Girls, we are leaving on a plane tomorrow morning. This is the third time we're changing it because you couldn't do it the first two times. Blondie, we could all be home by now. You know what? Yes. And my daughter has a name! Not anymore in my book, Oh, sweetheart. yes, she does. She has a name, Abby. So do you. Yeah. It starts with a B. Come on, girls. Let's go. Intensity is a good competition for us this week because there's a lot of intense feelings between Abby and Christy, between Kelly and Christy. So intense is the word this week. Girls, remember, you are in Fort Lauderdale. I mean, these kids down here dance. Dance is part of the culture. So you need to really focus. This is all about the technique. You got it? Did you guys go out last night? No. I'm not talking to her. Whether I called one time or 10 times, she should call me back. She never yes. answers my calls, too. I don't know what the problem is. No. I don't think it did anything wrong. I don't either. Christy, you're Where's awfully that quiet. Fire? Where's that spunk? All gone. You're not a wallflower. Maybe I've turned over a new leaf. Now listen to me. When you get out there, it's your face that wins. Everybody here has beautiful technique. Nobody else has Maddie's face. Girls, duet. Paige, you don't need to be goofy. It's fun, it's hot, you should look beautiful. You've had two weeks to work on this routine. They haven't really worked on it for two weeks, Abby. They learned I it. I know, that's like... my point. They don't self-motivate okay. themselves. They don't get out there and when work on When do you it. want them to work on it? We had privates, but we weren't able to go to them. But Maddie went to hers. You're so jealous of that kid. I'm oh, not God. jealous of Maddie. You're jealous that I'm talking to her, that I'm telling her the same thing I tell her because every Abby, week? Because, Abby, we're going on a couple after her. You made feet. sure her makeup her was week. perfect, her costume was perfect. You haven't looked at these two at all. Well, you handle her makeup. She's your job. Well, maybe Melissa should learn how to do makeup. This is Melissa's job, too. Melissa has never walked into my studio and said, my children are my job. Never. You know, I don't need a job. I know, but your kid still needs to point her feet. No money no, can That's buy your that. job. No, to teach money them. can't buy talent. Kelly, you want Paige's duet pulled again? 
two weeks in a row? You want Brooke Solo to just disappear? How about you ask Holly and Christy what running their mouths got them? I suggest you shut up and sit down. This is Brooke's first solo back. Woo! We'll see if it's her last solo on the team. Girls, go out there and dance today, and don't make me sorry that I let you do it. Understand? There's an elephant in the room, and for once, it's not Abby. Kelly and I have this huge feud going on, and eventually, we're going to have to talk it out. We can't keep going on like this. I will talk to you as soon as she's done dancing. I want to get her out there, and then I'll talk to you, OK? Mm -hmm. I think the judges already have a preconceived notion. Sweet, pretty little Maddie. She's going to tell the judges and every single person in that audience, don't judge a book by the cover. This is Maddie with You Don't Know Me. came back strong. I think technically, superb. When she stepped on that stage, it was all about Maddie. All right, we're moving back into the team solo division. I think Brooke's very nervous. She just keeps going off on her own. Brooke wants to prove to Abby that she can go out there and she can do this dance, and she can do it well. This is entry number 38, Brooke, with <laughs> As I'm watching Brooke on stage, she's nailing the routine. There's fluidity throughout. The old tricks are there. It's like the old Brooke is back. tricks and I didn't forget the choreography and I think I showed Abby that I cared. <laughs> Our duet is about to go up and we're really nervous. I want to show Miss Abby that she didn't make a mistake by letting us perform it this week. We've got to nail. All right up next in the junior duet trio division this is entry number 18 Mia and Paige with the wild child and the wallflower.
legs have been straighter? Sure. Could their feet have been pointed? Absolutely. Could they just be better overall dancers? Of course. But that's not what this piece was about. It was telling a story. It's musical theater. And that's exactly what they went out there and did. They entertained the audience. Woohoo! I thought Maddie was absolutely amazing. I thought the duet was good. What did you guys think? Yes, I was pleased. Pleased. I thought it was great. I thought that was the best thing to look. Good job, Nia. Good job, Paige. Good job, Brooke. Oh, God. Good um, job, sweetheart. Thank good you. job. I am shocked. I think Abby respected Nia as a dancer. They showed Abby that they want to dance and that they can dance. Now, you know why I pulled the duet last week, right? Mm -hmm. OK. I'm in the dressing room. All this chaos is happening. And then your mom starts. So before it went too far, I wanted to nip it in the bud. And the way for me to do that was to say, I'm pulling the duet. Understood? You know, everything happens for a reason. Just so you realize that. Now give me a hug. All right? Thank you. Right. Well, I want you to understand. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I think this is Miss Abby's version of an apology. Oh, no, I'm not apologizing. I'm glad I pulled it. Oh, Abby, I am come so on. glad I pulled it. All right, get ready. Come on. Let's worry about this next dance, Mom. Here, go put this on. For some reason, I'm apologizing for sloppy legs. legs. Oh, my gosh. Go ahead. You need to tell them. You're in the wings. I'm going to be sitting in the audience watching. The group routine is about to go on stage. These girls know that money is the root of all evil. They know what it takes to win. They also know what it feels like to lose. Give me a dollar stuck right behind this green glitter. Do you have any money in your purse, Kelly? You're always talking about how much money you have. Let's pull it out. Can't stick credit cards on her. That dress has already been done. I'm not so sure this is a good use of money, but Abby wants lots of dollar bills, to put on the children's costumes. Yeah, let me see. Where's your money? Come on, give me that purse. Don't hit me in the back with it. Just show it to me. There you go. No, I'm not Kathy. No, I work hard for my money. I don't want to use it as play money. I don't think that you needed to put real money on the costumes. I just think that's sense of wrong message. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, Jill's good at that. Let's go. Come on, girls. The group number is about to go on, and I'm feeling a little bit nervous because I haven't danced on stage for two weeks. I just hope that I'm not rusty and I don't want to let my team down. How's everybody doing? Everything just feels off. Kelly and I aren't exactly enjoying each other's company, and I'm not going to lie, it's really awkward. All right, coming to the stage next in the junior small group division, this is entry number 23, entitled Money is the Root of All Evil. <laughs> was very innovative. I thought it was something different than we had seen all day at the competition. And that's going to help us score high. Ah! Look at Ken. Oh, my god. How's everybody doing? We are ready to begin with our divisional overalls. We're going to start off in top scoring elite junior duo trios. Starting off in fifth place with a score of 262.1 points is act number 15, Viva La Swing. 
fourth place with a score of 263.3 points is act number 18, The Wild Child and the Wallflower. I think they were lucky to make the top five. They certainly wouldn't have won last week when I pulled them. Moving into our teen solos. In sixth place with a score of 280.7 points is Miss Samantha with act number 31. Fifth place with a score of 283.4 points is Miss Brooke with act number 38, Care Less. That was the best I've seen Brooke dance in a long time. Unfortunately, it wasn't good enough for the first place overall high score, but she did show me that she cared just a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, your second runner up for our elite junior solos is Miss Megan with act number 11, Somebody. Your runner up from our elite junior solos with a score of 284.6 points is Mr. Lucas with act number 13, Prison of Decision. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your highest scoring elite junior soloist with a score of 291.5 points is Miss Maddie with act number 12, New York Woo! Congratulations to our top 10 high scoring junior soloists. Hey, Starting off with She did it again. Overall high score of the junior division. Way to go, Maddie. Moving now into our elite junior small groups. This was a very difficult job these judges had. Third place is act number 21, Electric Barbarellas. Your runner up from the elite junior small group division of competition is act number 20, Respect. And the last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, your highest scoring elite junior small group, act number 23, Money <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, your highest scoring elite junior small group in the name of your studio, one, two, three. Happy Lee Dance Company! Congratulations, dancers. Let's do a bow on three. One, two, three. Thank you all very much. The girls for the first overall high score for the junior group divisions. I couldn't ask for anything more. All right, ladies, yay! Brooke, Woo! you made the top five. Congratulations, I'm very proud of you. Paige and Nia. Top five, you were fourth, that was excellent. And Maddie, congratulations. Thank you. You boys. are amazing, Maddie. Woo I have one last quote. Ladies, sometimes greed is good. <laughs> For once in my life, Christy and Kelly are not picking a fight with me. They're fighting with each other. I'm gonna walk right out of here and enjoy my weekend. I told Christy I would talk to her as soon as I was okay, done with we need all the my world confusion. Back. Yeah, but you know what? A normal play. I, I want to talk to her in private. Go ahead. So, Christy, if you want to talk, let's go outside. If you don't want to talk, we don't have to. You're rolling your eyes. I am a grown-up, and if I want to roll my eyes, I'm entitled to. Yeah. Why can't we hear? I called you. You didn't call me back. You called me on Friday. Christy, I called what else did no, you, you didn't. Yes, I and did. if I didn't answer, you should have called again. I you know, were having a problem here. I sat in a parking lot for you to get you and your kids back here. I know you did. And I when had you the worst here, week. I was thinking up for you. But you should have called me. Else. But you don't know it because you didn't answer my phone calls. I, I called you. No, I shouldn't have had to call you, Christy. Are you kidding me? I did nothing wrong. I was having a really bad week, and a real friend would have okay. picked up a phone and called but me. But I'm wrong because I said that you talked to Melissa more than you talked to me. You, you hurt my feeling. I and don't. And you hurt mine. I and you don't even call you. me. What else do you want me to do? Get We're in the car and phone. drive to my house. No, I'm not driving to your house. Why? I called you. If you can't answer my phone calls, then f you. F you. F you. Like, seriously, Christy. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks. Hi, I'm Jeff Collins. Welcome to Dance Moms Chatter. We've got some cast members here. We have some comedians who are also super fans of the show. Plus, we've got fan favorite clips that I know you're going to want to see. So it wouldn't be Dance Moms without some Abby Lee Miller drama. So take a look at this collection of clips I've put together for you. You will not get past this front desk without these being signed. Where's Kelly's? Kelly called me names. Kelly quit. Kelly boohooed. And her kids are lazy thugs. We're trying to stand behind 
Brooke in her decision, and we, we well, want to. I think to you're an Go. There's the door right there. Abby, I wish it were that easy. And if that's that, really what you want, I, then we will. That's not what I, I want, didn't but think I don't that's want what you wanted. Boo -hoo I don't either. Da, 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 the other moms can't because I can't. It's a brat. I'm about this far from pulling the duet. No, she needs to do the duet to prove to you that she's capable of dancing and dancing well through pain. I know, but your mouth is ugly, woman. You <laughs> are a monstrosity of evil. You want to talk about ugliness. You're done. You're done. No duet. What you say goes. You don't care about the kids. You don't care about anybody but yourself. That's terrible. Why would I be in this business if I didn't care about their futures? Well, then why don't you You're care about You're the one that screwed her up. Every opportunity I have given you came from my heart. That was awful, Maddie. I don't deserve that. I didn't deserve any of it. There's always another kid. There's always somebody else. We love you. We were ready to work with you. And you sat out there. I'm sorry. Why didn't you get out of the car and go? No, I'm going in there. You, Abby. You don't need him for the competition. I told you to do it for today. All right, without conflict, there wouldn't be any show, and these two lovely ladies know all about conflict. Please welcome fan favorites, dueling dance moms, Christy and Kelly. There's been a lot of crazy stuff that's happened this season. The fan sites are all buzzing, the blogs are buzzing about Abby dating. Oh, and God. we hear via the fans that she has not one boyfriend, but two boyfriends. One boyfriend in each city. Now, wait a minute. What do you consider a boyfriend? Now, this Someone is Someone not... who's willing to talk to her? I don't know. Is Bus Driver Jim considered a boyfriend? I don't know. He takes her out every Friday night. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> does he really? Jim's yes, a boyfriend. he does. Every Friday night when we travel, when we arrive at our destination, he takes her to the movies on the bus. There's been a lot of chatter about Abby's guy in L.A. I don't think Abby has a boyfriend in L.A. I think that Abby has a friend in L.A., a friend who is interested in being in the tabloids and things like that. Like, so if I can make it to the papers, know, I'll grab your ass. If he's at the Grove and there's people there taking pictures, why not grab her ass? That's the way to get in the tabloids. Ew. Wow. I don't think that actually means Ew. they're boyfriend-girlfriend. All right, so Abby's love life isn't the only shocker this season. You two had a pretty huge blowout, which we talked about on the reunion show a little bit. So in case anybody in the world missed it, take a look. I don't even want to hear it, Christy, because remember, I'm a bad friend. You know what? When I sat here the entire week, you were gone and stuck up for but you. Whatever. You ass. didn't call me because you were pissed off about something else. There. That shows me that you're really not a good friend. Believe me, Christy. I know. I, I know. won't be your because friend. Because I kiss ever. everyone's ass to you get do. my kid head. You no, do. I don't. You do. You, Kelly. Have... You. Ooh. You know, I have to say, nobody says F you like Christy. Oh, good. She's Thank like... you. Although Kelly's pretty good at it. I know. Yours is my favorite. Oh, thanks. The, I want to know, <laughs> I want to know something. Is what there is any kind favorite? of residual to what it was that happened that still lingers, or is it all gone? I don't know. That's a really hard question. True friends are really hard to come by. And I thought that we had that. And I hope that we can still have that. But there's always going to be a part of me that is going to feel like I don't know if she's 100% on my side. How does that make you feel hearing that? Um, well, you know, that's Kelly's perception of it. I can't say that you're wrong or you're right, because perception is reality. So you know, I guess every day we kind of just move forward and say, this is what's going on, gaining Kelly's trust is something that you don't take lightly. I know that you don't always trust everyone, so. I don't. I, you know, I think my relationship with Christy, we never had these problems. And then when this happened, I, I, I think I just know where I stand with her now. All right, well, clearly you two have had some really rough times on the show, and you've put up with a lot, and you've sacrificed a lot to be on the show. So let's take a look at this clip and see what your thoughts are on the backside. <laughs> I think Kathy would be really happy with your performance today. It's hard to see Kelly crying, thinking about the hard times she went through when her father had prostate cancer. And what really hit home to me is that people come and go so quickly in your life. And, you know, I love Kelly. 
she's like a sister. And even if you don't always like your sister, you always love your sister. Mm -hmm. I know. Aw, oh, see? That's what the fans want. <laughs> Come on, hug it out. Come here, hug it out. They're still best friends. Ooh. Yay! <laughs> Fans of the show can't seem to get enough of Dance Mom's drama, and my next two guests are no exception. Please welcome two super fans of the show, two very funny ladies, comedian and actress Lisa Arch and pop culture goddess Nadine Rajab. <laughs> welcome. Have a seat. How are you? Good. How are you? I, be, before we seat. start, I just want you to know that I'm such a super fan of the show that I always wear leg warmers. <laughs> Always, at all times. Can I ask them a question? Ah. Okay, this is this is my burning question. Do you have time to do anything ever? Other than dance? I, seriously, like you're my, I'm gonna tell you, I started watching the show and my goal instantly became to never let my son be, alone, be good ever. at anything. Because <laughs> I don't wanna spend my freaking weekends following him to competition. Exactly. Okay, first of all, you could never hang. What? What do you, mean you, couldn't hang? you couldn't hang. If her goal is not to have him be a superstar, she doesn't want him to be mediocre. Oh, well, no, I would hang with me. Thank my you. My kids Thank are mediocre. You, <laughs> you know, as Abby always says, I settle for mediocre. No. There was one episode where you were crying because you were like, I just have to get home and do my laundry. And and then you you have have yeah. So when does that happen? One thing is we have very good husbands. And, um, you know, we do have to hire people to Take oh. over some of our jobs. Uh, unfortunately, Christina and I are not as fortunate as Melissa, who hires somebody to, to do like, everything. Like, oh, I, I need I'm... someone to brush my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so listen, Kelly and Christy's blow up may have registered a 9.5 on the Richter scale, but Mom on Mom Rage has been a staple of dance moms since day one. Take a look at this. That's more important to me than her doing a dance with seniors that has known this dance all season, and Abby's throwing it on her in one night. Listen, no. you're yelling at me when you're mad at Abby. Don't be mad at me because she Joe, didn't you have the nothing number. to do with it. So I understand out. that. So shut your mouth. My point exactly. What the f does it have to do with Jill? Kelly, stop it. You. What's wrong with you? I don't care what you have to say. Okay. I have then a if comment. you don't care what I have to say, I don't care what you have to say. Then you need to be quiet. Because no this has nothing to do with you. No one tells me what to do, Kathy. You I... may as well stick your hand up her butt and be her ventriloquist. Who lies all the time? Okay. You, yeah. Who had an affair with her boss? Who is living with a man who's still married? That's it. I did not have an affair with my boss. Yes, you did. You know, I did not, bitch. And how old are you, double chin? Not as old as you. Who would know with all the work you've had done? What? Your ugly I mouth. Ugly mouth. Ugly. Watch it. Like you. Watch it. Everybody thinks you're a man. About that little crooked finger. Oh! Oh. Dude, Dude, you don't talk to me. Let's try to ask me a question. Okay. Look at you when I talk to you. Don't you count? Look at me in the eye and, and then look at you in the eye, bitch. Bitch, let's go. Let's go. I think it's hilarious that you're fat, Christy. I know, I'm I fat, Christy. That was not me that said that. That was Asia. Yeah, actually, Asia called me Asia fat, Christy said, on the bus. The child called yeah. you that? Absolutely. She said, my mom's skinny, Christy. Yeah, yeah. fat, Christy. So that's I why I referred to her as. Well, it was very funny. I, I like the way you handled it. I bump Christy, but that's whatever. That's nice. <laughs> you, you just don't have the cannons, you know? Like, she's kind of built like this martini glass. Tiny waist, big old boobs. Here we go. I'm gonna kick your ass. When Christy's in the room, she's very like, that's right, little girl, dance. No, no, work. Oh, and she always work. Like, yes, that she is always work. Like would she scare love. you? Would she scare you? Because the mom, some of the moms have said they're scared of her. Would she scare? She scares me. I mean, me. she's terrifying, and it. I think what's scary about her is that she's like, don't get in my way. I will have your ass. She just looks like she's she's very put together and like oh, well, pristine, she, oh, but she, she looks like she's the bodybuilder, you know, and she's gonna kick our asses, you know. But she, we're not that way. She and has on multiple clear. occasions you know, like said, "I'll take you outside." My mouth is my weapon, right. and I stop there. Right. Hi, welcome back to Dance Moms Chatter. I'm here with Dance Moms Christy and Kelly, and super fan comedians Nadine Rajabi and Lisa Arch, and we're dishing the dirt on Dance Moms. There have been lots of new additions to the Abby Lee Dance Company in the past couple of seasons but few have survived the hazing they've gotten from some of our veteran moms, let's That's just say. what you're talking about. Watch this. Hey, moms are here. 
The new arms? Okay. Bring them in. What? Hello. Uh -oh. Hello. Hi. How are you? Great. How are nice you? Nice to see I love you. Hi. Hi. How are you? Does anybody have a nail file? Should we get our cat claws ready? You guys sit here and you complain and you complain and you bitch at Abby, but you never move. Pick up and move, baby. You will find something else. You really, really, really like to change studios. So maybe you ought to change back and go back to Studio 19 if it was so great. You know what? Maybe it is. You some haters. That's the name. I call it like I see it. It's the truth. Y'all are liars. You liars, especially you. Oh, yeah, OK. You are phony as hell. So are you. I'm not you. You know what? what I see? I'm you, not you're phony fake. at all. Who I am is exactly who I come across as. Yeah, a bitch. That's what you are, and I know you own it. You don't know a thing, bitch. I'll be that bitch. Don't let the I door hit your ass all the way out, then. You want to watch your mouth, because I ain't the rest of these dance mamas. I'm not a doctor like Holly Boo. I'm from the hood. <laughs> Believe that. Abby, are you going to let this happen? It's bitter. I can't. I don't just fall like You're telling right we're bitter. I don't know how you work with these parents. All right, she's a fan favorite of Dance Moms. Please welcome Kaya, a.k.a. Oh. Black Patsy. Woo, here she comes. Wow. How are you? Hello. You no, know, I love me some Black Patsy. Mm, good to see you. So for those of you who've been living <laughs> under a rock and don't know, how did you get the nickname Black Patsy? Oh, well, my crazy mom thought that I act like Patsy Ramsey with Nakaya. So she started calling me Patsy. And when we started our St. Louis dance studio, they kind of thought the same thing for some reason, that I was like a Patsy. So we had a white Patsy, an Italian Patsy, and I became the black Patsy. Wonder why they thought that. Maybe. I'll be Persian Patsy then. <laughs> Persian Patsy. <laughs> and we get banana Patsy and color block Patsy. Oh, and I see? thought that was white Patsy. I have a feeling that this one is actually the nicest. I have a feeling. You're kidding no, me. I really think that deep down inside, that, that you are the kindest and that you have to put it out there that broadly because it's really not you. She was provoked. Oh, she was provoked. Are you I, saying, I really Lisa, are you saying you that, that she's sad inside? No, I don't think she's sad inside. I think she's shy inside. Oh, shy. You're shy inside. Shy. I really am. I really oh, am. Have you ever watched her. this show? I am she's shy inside. Shy. You have to put on a, a tough front with these bitches. You have to be tough. I really am. I don't, I mean bitch in a nice these way. bitches. I mean bitch okay, in a nice these way. bitches. I mean it in the nicest really way possible. Nice oh, I'm sure you do. So, Patsy, I've got, a, I've got a question for you. So, if you were able to come up with nicknames for all the other moms, like, have you ever thought about what would the nicknames be that you might give these? Uh, let's start with these two. What would their uh, names be? Oh, well, let's start with us. Okay. <laughs> I know I have Mild Manner Melissa uh? and Holy Holly. Oh. oh. <laughs> you would be Crazy Christy, and uh. you are Clonazepam Kelly. That's the, me that's the anxiety the med I What's take in. It's the anxiety <laughs> medicine. She needs that. She's Clonazepam that Kelly. That sounds like a cupcake. That's a drug. You mean I mean drugs? Drug. So, Patsy, what would you call Jill? I don't know if I would call her. I'm, I'm done talking with Jill at this point. I'm oh, about ready to want to the nose with her, but I won't do that. Premeditate. So how about Kathy? I love Kathy. Oh. What? She's love cool, Kathy. Kathy. You I do love, love Kathy. Kathy. I love on our Kathy. Team. Now all of a sudden, there will be on Abby your team. and cool Kathy. I never thought I'd be Team Black Patsy, but if you're calling her Abby, I might get on board. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so listen, Patsy. You had some interesting encounters with Christy and Kelly. Oh, cool. What do you think of the old school dance moms? <sighs> be nice. Old school meaning you were new dance moms. These were the old school dance moms. So what uh, do you think of these? Excuse me, young school. <laughs> They were like a gang, but they weren't willing to jump new moms in that gang either. Normally, gangs are kind of welcoming to other people. They were just like a gang. Like, they didn't want me to be part of that. So they were all crazy. Nadine and Lisa, don't you love the way, I love the way Patsy puts everything into like, people are going to get jumped. Right. Somebody's yes. about to get shanked. It's like. I didn't say shank. Don't make me sound like prison, Patsy, OK? <laughs> I didn't say shank. What do you think? I Go ahead, oh, well, okay, first of all, I think you'll agree to this. I think you are very intimidating. And I think coming into this group that's been together for many years would be a little scary to walk into. Can I just defend these two ladies? Yes, I feel like, please. no, not if you're on my couch. You take we your ass over there if you want to defend them. Excuse me. You yeah. come sit by me, girl. Come on, sweetie. Come sit by me. I feel, I feel like these ladies 
were like the American Indians, and then the oh Pilgrims came and like just ran them over. And Patsy, it's not their Why fault. Why to your mother? We all live in a teepee here. You know, everything you just said, you, it's clear, yeah, Kelly, you guys are intimidating. You're a clique. You not uh, whether or not you mean to be. You it's it's hard walking into a room where you guys are sitting. I'd be terrified. So I think maybe the you just maybe maybe shy Patsy just had her guard up a little bit when she came in. Yes. Oh, I don't know about that. I think you have to be tough to hang in there. And so far, a year later, I'm still hanging in there. So obviously, I made the cut. Well, you know what, Patsy? I give you a lot of credit because we are tough bitches. So you are some tough bitches. You guys are from the hood too, aren't you? Tough bitches. Let's hear for some tough bitches. I'm here with dance moms Kelly, Christy, and Kaya. And we've got some super fans who also happen to be incredible comedians, Nadine Rajabi and Lisa Arch. All right, so Lisa and Nadine, you guys claim to be super fans of the show. So let's put your dance mom's knowledge to the test. It's time to play the $10 pyramid. That's right, I said $10 because that's how we roll here at Dance Moms. Are you guys ready to play? I think so. Yes. All right. Here's what we're going to do. I'm gonna flip a square. Emily's I'm gonna sorry. help me here. How about a hand for Emily? You have a you have a model to do this, but you I can't have give us not more only than a model. I have a supermodel here. What kind of BS is that? I have a supermodel here. This is Emily. Exposure. All right, fine, fine. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna flip a square. I'm gonna ask a question, and the first one of you to chime in and get the answer right Are wins we allowed ten dollars. Okay. So this is this is a game for Nadine and Lisa, right? Oh, we can't play. play. You already know the answer. You guys just I would drink. Hope. Just drink. Everything. Take it as an opportunity to drink. This is our chance to be dance moms. All right, so here's the first one. All right, which of these sea creatures did the dance moms say Abby looked like? Was it Fudgy the Whale, The Little Mermaid, Free Willy, or Shamu? Well, I know that it's not the Little Mermaid, clearly. Right. Um, and um, she might be Fudge of the Whale, but I don't think she is. And she's not Free Willy because she's always stuck in the dance studio. But she's still a mammal, so she's Shamu. The answer is... Absolutely. The answer is Shamu. $10. And that all black, and she had like a four inch white stripe down the bottom of her. Now, how could you not color Shamu? Second question. Did she swim? Kathy would slit her wrist um, if Vivi did what instead of dance? I know this, I know this answer. Talk. No. <laughs> no. It's that's what is she it should baseball? Do. Play baseball? Close. Close. The girl version. Softball. Softball. <laughs> Let the model do it, Jeff. That's what she's there for. All right. Which historical figure has not been the subject of an Abby Lee dance company number? Rosa Parks, Ava Perone, or Pelham Keller? So we know that Rosa Parks was the, was the big one. But Ava Perone? I, I'll go with I'll, All I'll right. go with Nadine. Ava. And the answer is Ava Perone. You're correct. <laughs> All right. So Abby said, gimmicks are great, but judges are looking for blank. Technique. Always technique. I was. I had the answer. I was going to say. I was, I, that's what I was going to say. All right. Here we go. Let's do another one. All right. What was Christy afraid Black Patsy would pull out? Was it her thong, her teeth, or her weed? I would think that uh, uh, Christy would be afraid that Black Patsy would pull out another $100,000 contract. <gasps> Amen! <laughs> you need to be. I'm going to go with her weave. Her weave. Clearly. Yeah, her, weave. her weave. And I am not wearing a weave today. I am own natural bag. Girl. Girl. And the answer is it, her it, weave. Her weave. Uh, uh, that it's not natural, it's bleach. Well, of course it's bleach. <laughs> Last question. All right, according to the uh, other dance moms, where did Jill get her blue fur vest? Cookie Monster? <laughs> there is a naked Muppet running around somewhere. <laughs> She's getting a puppet. Oh, she is. naked Muppet. All right, thank you for playing. So I have a question. Where's our money? Where's our money? <laughs> the check is in the mail. Check is in the mail. Uh, <laughs> All right, listen, one of the things that fans love to post about are your looks. They seem to be obsessed with your hair, with your clothes, with your jewelry, with your shoes. So who would you two say is the most looks obsessed of all the dance moms? Who is it? Absolutely Joe. Oh, that was an easy Absolutely. one. Never yeah. Yeah. Jill? She puts lip gloss on to get off the bus at 5 p.m. on a Sunday. Was she always like that even before there were cameras? 
Let's do this. We put together a, a series of clips of Jill's fashion faux pas. And so let's take a look at this, and then when we come out on the other oh, side, Lisa and Nadine, you guys tell us what you think. Right, I, I feel like one of her outfits, like Tony the Tiger, I'm convinced, died oh. for one of her sweaters. Yeah, oh, the one with the blue eyes. My favorite is Cowboy Joe. Oh, uh, mine too. Cowboy Joe. You can't take her the seriously with that hat and you those boots. You cannot take her seriously no. with the cowboy in hat. In interview, too, that's the best part. Oh. She's in full character. Where she what? finds the oh. I don't know. For me, there's nothing better than a than a turtleneck with a full like <laughs> necklace of crystals. It's like she raided Elizabeth Taylor's closet after she died and like put everything on all at once. What's that old thing they used to say? Look in the mirror and take one thing take off. One thing off. With Jill, it should be look in the mirror and take everything. Oh, everything. No, Jill yeah. looks in the mirror and puts three things on. Right. Yeah. Abby herself has undergone some changes over the last uh, seasons. Uh, oh. I would say wasn't that fair? Oh, fair. So let's check out some of Abby's looks. Take a look. Oh, God. I'm not going to be nice. Oh. Right. So, ladies, what do you think That's about that look? Bad. She looks like Rosie O'Donnell's stepsister. Let's see the next one. I mean, well, OK, so that's clearly I need a little lipstick. I got to proof up the hair, no more headbands. So that's just her evolving. Let's take a look at the next one. Here we go. Whoa. Oh. oh. OK, so now that is the full evolution. Right. That is, I have now become, oh, I'm wearing the, you know, the fur. Hopefully, it's faux fur, right? She's got the sunglasses. She's got the lips. She's got the bag. Full evolution. It's very sort of John Belushi playing Elizabeth Taylor, isn't it? Like, it is. A little bit. It is. <laughs> We're here with dance moms Christy, Kelly, Kaya, plus superfan comedians Lisa Arch and Nadine Rajabi. I'd love to say your name. It's so much fun. <laughs> All right, it seems like the competition has really been heating up this season. Let's take a look at the meltdown moments. Good job! Uh, just so you know, Abby's going to come in here. It's going to be awful. Nice job, Chloe! Huh? Nice Let's job. Go. We're leaving. You want Chloe gone? We're gone. You get your way. You can have whoever you want. I look about three months pregnant there. No, she didn't. And then drops her hat. Yes, she did. No, she didn't. You know yes, what? You go ahead and replace me. Well, I'm leaving. I'm not going to make a scene with oh, you. Oh, that's the easy way out. No, right? I'm done. I'm done. This is not what I signed up for. Humiliation for my daughter. I didn't humiliate her. Yes, she did. humiliated herself. Abby, she out of shut the up. Shut up. Stop talking now. Replace us. That's fine. Come on, Chloe. We're done. She was completely confident. Yeah. And she wanted to prove to her dance teacher that she was strong enough to stand up to somebody. And she did. Yeah, she OK. She was great. Do you want your kid just to be another pretty face, Kelly? My Don't you want her to have some pretty guys? face? She stands up to you every week. Every day when you scream at her, she stands up to you. Miss Kathy had a bunch of kids that don't even take from you anymore. That's ridiculous. You never produced anything, anything. You make an ass of yourself, and they know it just as well as everybody well, else. Well, I sleep at night. I do, too. You think I lose sleep over you? Do you think I've given up my whole life in all the organizations? that I belong to, to deal with that oh, piece of crap. No. She is dirt under my feet. She hit me, there was no going back. The minute she struck me, she left the room. She doesn't even walk in my circle. She does not live in my world. Chloe is a product of you. She's been at your studio well, since then, she was two. She's lazy. Then why don't you say, do this? This is how you fix it. She I want to see a suit you Tell me every day. Stop Chloe out. is your student. And you are a plagiarist because that little girl is somebody else's student, and you right. just put it's... her name on her back. You're ridiculous. Chloe was awful today. Ooh, we got some mama drama going on. That's hard to watch. I mean, it's hard. But here's the thing. I feel like Abby just gets off on doing this, and then she'll say, you know what, because you guys up, sorry, uh, I'm going to pull your daughter, and I don't think it's fair. Oh, really? You see that? Because that's what I see. It's like that's she just see spends it. Do people. Do you see what I see? Okay, but wait, but I'm going to throw a little wrench into this. Oh, here. stop with your wrenches. Yeah, because, Christy, listen, you, the one where you were upset, you said, oh, well, Abby, go ahead and replace me. And I thought, wait a minute, replace you? Wouldn't it be your daughter she's replacing? Uh, well, <laughs> yes, Absolutely. yes. However, we go together. I mean, Abby will be the first to say that she looks at the child and she looks at the mom. And she likes a mom who can either make a costume or pay someone who will make a costume. So we're clearly a team.
So you guys always have to be on your best behavior oh, as your daughters get absolutely. punished. But I've been trying this season to behave myself. And I mean, my have kids you? still. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely have been. <laughs> I have been. I haven't been fighting with Abby is what I should say. So did you guys have a favorite moment when you saw those clips? Like, just now? Yeah. Oh, they're all lovely. You know, look, <laughs> I honestly, when I'm at home watching the show and there's the, the moment of, you know, Christy packing her stuff and we are out of here and all of those moments of people constantly leaving, I like, I want a montage of just like the, the goodbyes. <laughs> just, you know, there they are, everybody's leaving and then they've come back and I'm now they're done. all leaving again. That's what we say. Uh, yes, I'm done. I kind of like that. Those are <laughs> and, my favorite moments. And I love. I love Christy in, in a skin tight dress and six inch heels like on her knees, like packing the bag. Right, right, right. <laughs> so does my husband, Jeff. So does my husband. And then they come back and then they'll go, oh no, why is my daughter suspended? It's because you guys quit and then you're back again. But then like, it's shocking. It's like, sorry, I know I was team Christy, but like, <laughs> I just, I'm just Nathan, saying, sorry. I'm, I do have to say that there is a lot of mom crying. There's a, a lot more mom drama and mom crying on the show than there is the kids. kids. The kids, did, that's the part that I find interesting. Now you, I don't know if I've ever seen shed oh, a tear. I'm a mess. Mess. Have you? I'm a mess. Okay. a couple times. But, but the, now, the I girls cry do when, not. When, when wonderful things happen to Chloe, I'm like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's You're really a happy really cry. Speaking of kids, Abby gave Chloe and Maddie the same choreography for a solo this season. Why do you think she did that, Christine? To shut me up. Because I kept saying, put them on a level playing field. I, I did. I said, put them on a level playing field and let's see where the chips fall. Well, let's see how that number turned out. Take a look at this clip. Coming up now is entry number 19 in the junior solo division. <laughs> Here's Chloe with You Can. Takes a moment to break a butterfly on a wheel. That's when you hear an angel cry. Voices inside me, I still hear them say, You can be anything, anything, anything you dreamed of, anything you dreamed of. Next is entry number 20 in the junior solo division. Here's Maddie with Be Anything. So what was the outcome? Chloe won in the awards, and Abby was sitting in the audience, and she said, no, Maddie won. And she went to the judges, and she argued the point, and she came back in, and what was it, 80 numbers that day? And they misjudged one, and it just happened to be Chloe's. This is Dance Moms Chatter, and I've got Dance Moms Christy, Kelly, and Kaya and comedians Nadine Rajabi and Lisa Arch talking all things Dance Moms. All right, there may be no crying in baseball, but there certainly are some tears in television. And it wouldn't be an episode of Dance Moms without some waterworks. Take a look at this. OK, stop crying. It's making it worse. Let me go home. What do you mean? You never leave Dance Moms. No, my stomach just started to hurt. I don't know why. <laughs> you never miss Dance but we know you're a good friend. And those who know you, just please stop, OK? <laughs> I 
Brooke, what's going on with your mom? She's hyperventilating. Bad. Come, come here, just come with me. Kelly, you're making me really scared. You're getting really scared. OK, come okay Kelly, come Kelly, please. Just take some deep breaths. That's all. I'm done. She walked right into the curling iron. Oh, I'm going to ask you just to do for me just an apology to him, and then we'll work it out. I know that you guys don't understand what Jayla does on his level. But he's very big at what he does. I know. And he's working his ass off. And you got some kid that comes in here that you're praising that ain't putting it half the effort he does. He's yeah. got a point, guys. That's I BS. Have... I should just go home. OK, but honey, but don't cry. Why are you crying? I don't want to let her down. Oh, honey, I know you don't. But you're not letting Miss Abby down. It'll let her down if you hurt it worse. And she understands that. I know. You can't humiliate her over and over and over and I know. I know. I just. I know. Okay. 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 Don't be sad. You look beautiful for what you did, too. She reveled in doing that to an 11 year old. She did it. She did it to my. Hey, baby. <laughs> what are we doing to our kids? <laughs> she was so cute and never hurt anybody. She made everybody smile. Come on, big mama. We got this. Come I don't want to go in crying. Come on. Kids should cry when their arm is broken and it's hanging off or somebody dies. That's it. Uh, this is my favorite. Sometimes people just cross the line. Kathy crossed the line. It's been a rough day and I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> I love she's, the way she's trying to breathe through it. <gasps> it's like little eyes. Your, your blood. I have to sit. I'm on my I know. My blood is like I've never seen Abby like this. I think losing to Kathy really got to her. Yes, I think that's it. It was losing. It wasn't the hitting by the purse. She's going to have a heart attack. I got in a fight with a man earlier who was belligerent. Now, belligerent I. I come and this woman, like, Kathy, comes in. First, she brings three men into the dressing room, which I don't appreciate. And then she whacks me with a purse. Then I came in my dressing room and got in a fight with my own student and her mother, Holly. What goes around comes around, and karma's there when you need it. So it's been a long day. I was in the wrong. I know that. I've had it. I've had it. I'm finished. Oh, put on your sunscreen. Let me put on toes. my cape. It, it's a cloak. Whoa. It's a damn curve. It's a cloak. It's a curve. Wait, I think Christy's got something to say. Jeff. <laughs> I was belligerent. I was beat by a little quiet <laughs> man. <laughs> and then I called my mom. Can you imagine her poor mother on the other no, end of the phone? Oh, going, no, going, what? How many Who? times has she said, save your tears for our pillow to the, like, our seven-year-old? And she's like 150. She's like, my mom. I'm mom. calling my mom. Mom, I should move there. The boy that he made me cry. Abby, when she cries, and it's like, I don't know if it's real tears, but it's a little bit like she has to think about it, and then it's like dead puppies, dead puppies, dead puppies. Oh, that was so wrong. Watching Kathy cry truly is like watching the Wicked Witch cry. You think there is an amount? I just, everyone else I believe, like, has some sort of, like, feeling going on, but watching Kathy cry is seriously like, I'll get you, my pretty. <laughs> why is Kathy a, why is Kathy a, why is Kathy a witch because, and Abby's not a witch? Because why? anybody who wears a golden retriever as a coat is a witch. <laughs> Which of the girls is the biggest crybaby? I think that's, no. I don't know if that's a fair question. But well, do any, I think it depends on the week. Any of the children, though, who do any of the kids like use oh, crying as a well, way to get out of something? Who throws their kids under the bus? I don't. I'm going to say none. None of the girls. 
Oh, Kaya right Kaya, Kaya, Kaya wants oh, to throw some Kaya hands has, who, Who's a crybaby? If you say Chloe, I'm pulling out your weave. Who you? <laughs> you got one more weave threat today, OK? Do not, I don't play, 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 play about my weave. I do not play about Chloe, my weave. You say Chloe, I'm pulling out your weave. I think Chloe cries a little too much, and I think Paige cries too. Paige? Yeah. Really? I changed my answer. It is Kendall. She's the crybaby. Don't tell her mom I said that. <laughs> She's a crybaby. I, I would cry too if my mom dressed like that. I mean, uh, <laughs> can I get an amen? <laughs> so what do you what do you girls think? I'm gonna go with Kendall. Yeah, I, look, I I would say that I think Maddie cries. I remember Maddie crying more, but I think because when Maddie cries, it's very dramatic. It's they're the tears of a real dancer. Dead puppies. So I think, yes. No, I, and puppies. I think Those are tears from the theater. Yes, they're theater tears. That's what it is. So when Maddie cries, it just sticks in my brain. Well, I'm going to ask our guests. I'm playing the role of Dr. Phil today. Oh, Dr. Phil. Why don't you just want to give as, us as you a, know, an exam? As you know, so many lessons, so many lessons are learned from watching Dance Moms. Can you ladies wrap it up, please, and tell us what lessons you've learned that you've applied to your well, own lives? Well, after that last watching... conversation, oh. and Osh, I have learned that there is no more dramatic exit than to say, that's it, I'm done. <laughs> that's the most important lesson. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. You're yeah. done. Yeah. And how about you? What life lessons have you learned that you're applying to your own life that are, that are making you a better person as a result I've of watching this? I've learned that no matter what you wear and no matter what anybody says about you, that you could still keep dressing terribly day after day <laughs> after day. Hey! Yeah. Kaya, what have you learned? Not a damn thing. <laughs> I haven't. I've learned how to argue more with, I haven't with other women. I, I haven't learned a thing. You are welcome. What is Chloe learning from all this? What do you think she'll take away from it? Uh, I think Chloe, as well as, I think Paige is Paige, in the same boat as Chloe. I think that they are learning that no one's going to hold them down. I do. No one has told them that they can do it. They're all, they've all been told and that they're not it, good enough. And something my dad has always told me that something that is benefiting my girl is that you're never going to win everything. Yep. Right. There's always somebody better out there. And you know what? You know what? You're, None of us you're have... going out there and you're learning how to be a good loser. I believe that those kids are the ones who will end up being the most successful. I believe that the kids, when they're really young and they're told, you're brilliant, you're beautiful, you're always mm -hmm. winning, I really do believe it's the underdog that in the end... Uh, absolutely. And, and I... So you were making that point. Uh, absolutely. I, and it's it, easy know, to win, it's hard to lose uh, and persevere. And I always say that to Melissa. I always say, you know, Maddie's always used to winning. What happens when she loses? You know? Like, how is she going to handle that? Or what because happens when she just gets bored? It, exactly, you know? And I, I mean, Paige is used to not winning. And she's fine with that. And, and she's happy for her friends winning. And I don't know that Maddie can handle her friends winning and her losing. I don't, I don't know that Maddie can handle that. All right, well, that's about all we have time for. I want to say a big thank you to our dance moms, Christy and Kelly, Kaya. To our comedians, Nadine and Lisa, thank you so much. You guys have been fantastic. I'm Jeff Collins, and this has been Dance Moms Chatter. Join us next time for more dirt, more dish, and much more drama. And that would be Dance Mom style. Hi, I'm Jeff Collins, and welcome to Dance Moms Chatter. I'm here with everybody's favorite dance teacher, Miss Abby Lee Miller. My favorite and yours. Listen, if you love all things Dance Moms, grab a cocktail, get comfy, because we're going to dish the dirt and reveal everything you've always wanted to know about your favorite show and mine. We've got fan favorite moments, burning questions from Twitter, cast members, some super fan comedians, and never before seen clips. Are you ready for the lowdown? All right, so listen, the internet is buzzing about you and the show, and we've got, uh, we got a lot of questions from fans. But actually, what I wanted to do is take a moment to ask you kind of how this all got started. Why did you go straight to being a choreographer versus 
being a dancer? Well, I was very creative. I had an eye for costuming. I had right. an eye for color. I had a good ear to pick out music that captured the audience's attention. A lot of people want to know if you're one of those people who always dreamed of being famous. Or I this... was always a star in my own mind. Well, it just there... took everybody else a little time to catch up. I wanted my students to be famous. I wanted this life for them. And now I'm living it. It's crazy. <laughs> but I worked hard and I gave up a lot for those kids. You know, I gave up my personal life. I gave up many, 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 many times with my family doing things because of my students. You know, somebody would have a wedding and I couldn't go because my student was performing at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. Uh, you know, a Broadway opening was the same time as my class reunion. You know, just, I gave up my personal life for these kids. Right. Well, and now, you know, look what's happened to you now. You invested well in yourself. Thank you. And in your kids. All right, well, listen, I've got a surprise for you. We have some guests on the show. Not only are they super fans, they are super funny. So please welcome Ugly Betty's very own Alec Moffa and recap queen Nadine Rajabi. Yeah! Woo! Woo! Hello! Touch the money. <laughs> First rule of show business. Alec, how did you and Nadine get to be such fans of the show? I actually heard about it after the fact, after season one, and then I'm like, oh my God, what is this show? And I went back and I'm like, oh my God, Abby's amazing. Thank you. You come on and you just tell everybody basically to f off in a good way. But anyway, she's cute and she's darling and those shoes are fabulous. You're, You're like the honey badger of the show. Yeah, she is. Like everybody could be going crazy around you and you kind of like maintain this demeanor like I'm the boss and that's all there is to it. And, and the best part is, is that Abby goes, you know what, you're a suspended daughter because your mom was a whore, like basically. <laughs> <laughs> What's been the worst um, dance mom attack ever? Oh, we refer to her as the sinister minister. The sinister. <laughs> Let's take a look at that infamous moment and some more memorable dance mom's blow ups. <laughs> they were to wear tights and a leotard. I made two other children change their clothes because it's acro. We're doing a lot on our knees and they have to be in their bare feet. May I speak to you a minute? No, I'm a person. I want to speak to you. You don't throw my kid out of class. I paid for class. She's not dressed appropriately. I'm looking at every single kid out here, Abby. They all look like children. Isn't that crazy that children look like children? She's dressed appropriately. Look at the kids are not phased whatsoever. Play the Bible game, Abby. When Jesus saw things that were wrong, he went after it. And I'll tell you what, you're not gonna do this to my kid. Out of the room. Out. Out. Reagan, goodbye. Out. Out. You're not throwing her out. Oh, yes, I am, and you with her. Go. No, you're not. Yes. Every week we put the trash out. Go. Then take yourself out because you're the biggest piece of trash there is. <laughs> Abby, I think we need to talk. No, you're not going to ruin this day. No, we no. need to no. talk, no. Abby, in the hallway now. Are you kidding? I'm a paying client and you won't speak to me. No, nothing's worth that much money. I think the worst thing that Christy can do is talk about me when her daughter is present. I cannot get Chloe to trust me if her mother doesn't trust me herself. I'm so excited for you, because she got yeah, the best award. We don't want to ruin the weighted victory. <laughs> I'm not ruining today. No, Abby, what, what, we need to go in the here? hallway. Don't be doing this why in front of my this daughter, here? Chris. Abby, we can all go in the hallway, because I tried to talk to you, and I tried I'm to talk to you personally. Guess what? Let's go why in the hallway. I'm not the going anywhere. Just one. My daughter's happy. Let's go in the hallway. Do you want to talk about all the things that need to be talked about? Not here, because not now. This you is the weekend. Won't talk Quit drinking! I'm 
I'm not going on that bus. That oh, bitch. Okay. So, cry. I'm telling you. Uh, Give me a phone. No, she didn't you even You are out of control. I for staying at your studio. There you go. Then I need to leave. You're done. You've had two weeks to work on this routine. They haven't really worked on it for two weeks, Abby. They love it. I know! It. That's like, my point! They don't self-motivate okay. themselves. They don't get out there and when work on it. When do you it. want them to work on it? We had privates, but we weren't able to go to them. But Maddie went to hers. You're so jealous of that kid. I'm my not God. jealous of Maddie. You know, you're jealous that I'm talking to her, that I'm telling her the same thing I tell her because every week. Because, Abby, we're going I'm on telling a couple your kids after to point her. You made sure her makeup was perfect, her costume was perfect. You haven't looked at these two at all. Well, you handle her makeup. She's your job. No, I don't need a job. I know, but your kid still needs to point her feet. No money well, can buy that. That's your job. No, to teach money them. can't buy talent. Honey oh. Badger don't care. Like, you are unmovable. Like, it was either her or you, and it was and like, was bye. Mortgage. I would have been like, in the Bible, Jesus wore the proper clothing to the dance class. <laughs> it's in Leviticus. But you could kind of see, like, the crazy in her eyes already. From the moment she walks into the room, she's like Cookie Monster. Like, her eyes are like... Nom, 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 nom. So nom. Yeah. there's no way that was going to end nicely for anybody. All right, so you had some choice words for Sinister Minister when she went off on you that day. So how did that situation ultimately resolve itself? She got thrown out. The police came, hauled her out of there, and said, you're finished. It's private property. So I just... Dial 911 and they come and haul everybody out of there. Now it's up to me to sue her for the rest of her tuition. So she does, she's not at the Abby Lee Dance Company anymore? She doesn't? Hell no, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's been a lot of gossip on the blogs. In case you haven't heard or been paying attention, Abby Lee Miller is officially off the market. Take a look at this. Wow. What is the question? Are you a jock in high school? Please tell me you play football. I played football. I played basketball. I'm a 50 yard line type. Oh, I right. No. Oh, were you a cheerleader? Yeah, you know what? No. I just mean I did it on the 50 yard line. You did? Let's just go over a few things, Chris. I have some questions for you. I have some answers. Do you own your own tuxedo? Yes, I do. Okay. As a matter of fact, I do. And I can tie a bow tie. An actual Ooh, bow tie. That's like a bonus point. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Nice to meet you. I'm Carl. OK, ladies, Carl has gum. But it must mean he has fresh breath. My mom used to teach dance. And she used to own her own dance studio. So you grew up around a dance studio. Oh, thumbs up, thumbs up. Saved by the bell. I didn't even get my tough questions. OK. Why did they take me on those field trips when I have the worst no. outfits on? You're only as good as your last performance. First of all, wait, 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 wait. First of all, we, we have got to cover, what was the most shocking thing you heard in that clip? Um, that Abby was a 50-yard line girl. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you a question. What made you decide to go along with this whole speed dating thing? I think I got to leave the studio. Did you enjoy it? It was hilarious. And they're talking about on the blogs about you dating someone. So who are you dating now? There's a rumor that you and the bus driver are doing it. Is that true? <laughs> what blog did you read that from? Um, Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> I am not dating someone. I just have someone that cares about me. Is it someone who cares about you in Los Angeles? Yes. So how weird is it trying to date like that when you go on a date like that and the cameras are following? I know that waiter was pretty hot at that restaurant. For those of you who didn't see that she actually went on a date, here we go. Let's take a look. So you're not in a relationship right now, obviously. Well, kind of have a long distance. We all have a long distance. Mm -hmm. It's good to have a long distance. It keeps it out there. <laughs> oh, my god. This is the chef's specialty. It's chocolate eruption. He wasn't too bad. You yeah. can have the first bite. Mm -hmm. Is that good? <laughs> Tell me about your dance background. Yeah, dance ba I had a slight dance background. Tell me. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was a male stripper. No, you were Yeah, for a little bit. <laughs> they made me do it. Who's they? No, I am not dancing on this table. Why? I'll break it. Wuss. 
I am 180 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal. This this table will crack. Twisted steel and sex appeal. I'm just saying. <laughs> ah! What do you think, Alan? I know we've just met, but please tell me you've never gone out with this person again. No, ever, ever, never. ever. Louis looked like uh, the mix between Count Chocula and my cousin Vinny. With the kind of beard that kind of yes. ends like right underneath his eyes. He took you to a place called Flowers in the Attic, and you guys were the only people there. Like, that's not creepy. <laughs> he's my worst nightmare. That date where you're like laughing your head off, and you're having a good time, and he's looking at you like you just farted in his hand. <laughs> No, you know what I was thinking about? I was thinking of... Teen Wolf. Teen, Teen Wolf, Wolf. Yes. yes. But then he had that weird bleach streak going through. He's like, I'm Count, Count Vladimir of Pittsburgh. So what's more terrifying, going on a first date with a stranger or being attacked by a crazy dance mom? Oh, going on a first date with a stranger. Definitely. <laughs> the dance mom I can handle. I'm here with Abby Lee Miller, our star of our show, and superfan comedians Alec Mappa and Nadine Rajabi, dishing the dirt on Dance Moms. All right, now we've seen what happens when Dance Moms attack, but what happens about the rare mom Abby calls friend? Well, sometimes. Sometimes. Please welcome Dance Mom Melissa. Good to see Good you. Good to you. Melissa, you and Abby have been friends for a long time. You guys have a long history together. So the fans want to know, like, what's going on with the two of you with this, you know, on-again, off-again relationship? Because you had a little bit of a rocky thing that yeah, happened. Yeah, but we're always going to be friends. So this past season, how did your friendship go? You know, you were always known as, like, best friends, and then this last season you had a bit of a bump in the road. Oh, the standoff, the standoff. Oh, well, you know, I have been telling Melissa since day one that she shouldn't do what the other moms do. If Maddie and I don't mean any offense by this, was a racehorse, she wouldn't be in the barn with all the other horses. <laughs> She's winning the race. She's a thoroughbred. She is in the winner's circle. The other horses that didn't win, yeah. that aren't not, in the not race, so much. they're just getting the oats or yeah, whatever, they're getting the you know, and the down. apple, and they're getting yeah. hosed off. Yeah. That's right. So people say, oh, she's your favorite. She's on time. She's prepared. She's warmed up. She's dressed appropriately. If you want to be the favorite, do that too. Well, what it really boils down to, and if I may, you're upset because Melissa sided with the moms and not you. Yes. All right, so for anybody who missed it or wants to see it again, let's take a look at what actually happened. You guys want to see it, Alec? Yes. Okay. All right, let's take a look at what actually Where's happened between popcorn? Melissa and Abby. Here we go. Ab, can I talk to you for a sec before you leave? Yeah, what? I really would love for Maddie to prove to you that she can Win. I know, and, Melissa, you but know, you have to realize that she was just in a duet with Kendall. And even though she was a lot better than Kendall and a lot stronger, she didn't blow me away either. She is special. And my I daughter know, but wants to dance. Why am I telling you that? Why wouldn't a kid that had the potential to make it, to have a career in this business, not have her own integrity, her own ambition she to, to get in. out of the car and walk in? She wanted to come Then why didn't you? What, what kind of parent were you to not let her? I've been committed to the studio. But your daughter has been given opportunity after opportunity and after I opportunity. It. And I appreciate that. I have sent that. her to New York for auditions. And I took her to LA. Every time. I do all of these things, Melissa. And I know and that. I called you. I know you did. I called you. I didn't call every one of those mothers. You, you know what? My daughter is special. Your kids special on Paige and Brooke. I would have never picked up the phone and called Sophia if Maddie would have been in this building working her butt off. Well, you know, we all make mistakes, Abby. I've been yeah, committed to Yeah, but what you did, studio. you hurt your own kid. You didn't hurt me. I, I realize that, Abby. No solo this weekend. There is no way, Melissa. You did this to Maddie, not me. So, Abby, did you feel like you could trust Melissa after what happened? I just think that Melissa needed to be taught a lesson. Her friendships have to be separate from raising her children. Those kids should come first. And there's other talented kids out there. Forget about this confrontation. What the hell was Jill wearing again? <laughs> I know. She tries to be 20. She was we wearing a black forever poodle around her neck. <laughs> Jill has two teenage daughters, and I think she wants to be them. <laughs> Can I borrow this sweater, you guys? It's 14 sizes, too small and too short. And... All right, well, there's one dance mom, Kathy. Kathy not only left the studio, but she's been on a seemingly relentless campaign to beat Abby at every turn. Take a really? look at this. There's a dance teacher in our area whose kid went to New York City with him while he was away from Oz. Stretch it out, stretch it out. 
How are you? <laughs> Good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. John is a brilliant, brilliant choreographer. John, is that Great your LA man? No, that's my Miami John. That's your Miami. She has Johns in every state. <laughs> Love you. Okay, let's go. Come on. Ooh, Bradley did not like that, but you knew somebody. Like there's like daggers coming I out of her eyes. You know everybody, so you're the real I, deal. I've been doing this for 33 years. Uh -huh. I take kids all over the country. She's at home with her husband and her kid. I leave my family. I leave my studio, my hometown. Every other studio in my town is at home. Where am I? Orlando, New York, Vegas, LA. I'm with my students. I meet people. I network. I take my kids. I walk in. I go, I throw them at the producer, at the director, at the choreographers. Here's the difference Sorry, between I... you and Kathy. You tell it like it is. She reminds me of that joke. What's the difference between a bitchy queen and an evil queen? A bitchy queen will say, are you going to wear that? And an evil queen will say, you look terrific. That's who Kathy is. I actually think Vivi is the mastermind behind Kathy. She's actually no. not a baby. She's actually 47. She's a 47-year-old woman. <laughs> <a child. laughs> she doesn't speak oh! because she actually She controls. never speaks. No, she she kind of just lurks by yeah. the table like during like, the auditions. Creepily. Like Right. And then eats ice cream. And she's just like. So listen, a lot of fans have been asking about where Kathy's money comes from. So I think we may have found the answer. Take a look at this. We got a phone call from Kathy oh. that, um... I know that she is up to no good, so whatever it is, well, it was manipulative. You know how her husband owns that beef jerky thing, right? <laughs> well, he was doing a commercial for the store, and Kathy called, and she offered Chloe a job to go be in the commercial. Oh, so that's where you were yesterday. So here's oh the commercial. God, I... We've got beef jerky, turkey jerky, chicken jerky. Hell, my mouth's on fire jerky. If you can jerk it, Tommy's got it, because no one jerks it like Tommy. Say my first rodeo. Mm, yeah. She's a piece of meat. Do you think that she rodeo. had her come to, like, humiliate her? Absolutely. Well, isn't that every dancer's worst nightmare? That my beef jerky past is going to come up at some point. Yes. <laughs> you know, Dr. Holly, yeah. she lost it this year, and she called Abby a monstrosity of evil. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, to Abby, do you even know what that means? Yes. We're like, I don't know what that means. A monstrosity. Like, monstrosity. But at least she used great words, yeah. you know. All right. So the conflicts and rivalries on the show not only make for some great television, they coin some interesting insults. You might want to grab a pen and take notes on this one. Oh, so what's your group dance this week? Are you riding unicycles? You're a smart girl. What's it look like? Well, I, I don't know. It's like a bicycle <laughs> wheel. So what's it to you? I'm just asking what your gimmick is this week. You always have There's one. There's no gimmick. That gimmick tends to beat you every once in a while. Every once in a while. Where, where'd you guys get these? From Kathy's wheelchair. Uh, no, Jill. You gotta admit, that's funny. No. That's, that's funny. Yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah, we're all laughing. And how old are you, double chin? Not as old as you. Oh, really? Well, like a Who would know with all the work you've had done? OK, turn around if you don't like it. I don't need to turn around, Jill. Then I don't shut up. No, I don't need to shut up either. Yes, you do. No, I don't. OK. You no, I don't think you and can. And listen, there are children here, so watch your mouth. I don't have to watch my mouth, Jill. Watch your ugly mouth. I don't have to watch my it's ugly, ugly mouth. Ugly. You should like talk you. about ugly. Everybody thinks you're a man in disguise. Ooh. <laughs> Jalen. You have to continue to take dance classes, and you want to be well-rounded, yes? Just not well-rounded like Abby. Do you think I've given up my whole life in all the organizations that I belong to to deal with that Holy piece of crap? No. She is dirt under my feet. She hit me. There is no going back. I'm sorry that you guys are miserable. I'm sorry miserable. you guys are miserable. Our kids are happy. They you talk to me. What's and your don't ask me a question. Look at you okay? when I talk to Wasn't you. Don't, you guys are so caught up on, oh my god, complaining no about every I'm little asking. that happens. And I'm then tell me, bitch. Yeah. Bitch, let's go. Let's go. I'm not no, that way. Exactly. Yeah, Do not call me a bitch if you can't back it up. Oh my gosh, guys, where do we begin? First of all, I think that uh, that that Skinny Christy is like the uh, Queen Latifah of Dance Moms. Is she not? She has to stand, uh, sit like this because to hold up her boobs. <laughs> I felt like she was gonna float away a little bit. 
I wanted to say something about Kathy, though. The last time I saw her, she got lots of work done. Did you notice that? Did she? She's like this. Is she? Oh. Really? And Jill said, look. I said, I know. I saw. You sure? Ooh. Oh, she did something. There was something well, going on. Well, the meat on. didn't pay for that. Something going on there. The jerky didn't pay for that. I think they could take the insults even further. Do a whole round of, your dance mama is so. Are we going there? Your dance okay. mama is so dumb. She bought point shoes for her fingers. <laughs> your dance mama is so dumb. When they told her she was pigeon toe, she went to the vet and got x-rays. <laughs> <laughs> your dance mama so stupid. She doesn't know what comes after five, six, seven. <laughs> your dance mama is so stupid. Stupid <laughs> that when Abby told her to put her daughter's hair in a bun, she went and got out a baguette. <laughs> you know, level of that caliber, perhaps. Thank you. I'm here with our star, Abby Lee Miller, dance mom Melissa, and super comedians and fans, Alec Moppa and Nadine Rajabi. The show has become a huge success, and as we all know, imitation, and in this case, parody, is the sincerest form of flattery sometimes. So take a look at this clip from Dance Moms, the musical. Look at my Maddie, just look at her shine. She's Abby Lee's favorite and obviously mine. I used to kick higher, I used to turn more. Now Maddie's nine, but back then I was four. I almost had my shop, but my mom made me stop. So I'm gonna see that Maddie makes it straight to the top. lyrics to that song, Don't Mess With Abby Lee. Do they really need the music in front of them to remember that? Right, like there's no it verses. Like there were no other words. Don't mess, don't, don't mess, mess, don't. I got it. <laughs> there's a really, really good studio in uh, South Carolina, and their big production number this year with 70 kids in it is Dance Bombs. And they took clips from the show, like uh, voice bites now, from the show. Now, how do you find out about it? Do people send you stuff all the time? Or? No, I just, I know them, and I've heard through the, no, I heard through the grapevine. I haven't seen it yet, but I want to see it. That's so neat. All right, so Nadine and Alex, I'm going to mix things up here for a second. I'm going to give you guys 10 seconds each to ask as Ten. many questions as you can to Abby. All right, okay. All right, Nadine, you go first. Go. Who do you think dresses the worst on the show? Kelly. Do you think that Jill kisses your ass because she wants to take Melissa's place? Jill buys nice gifts. Do you think that Jill's a horrible dresser? No comment. All right, time's up. <laughs> so how many, how many? All right, so Alec, I'll give you 10 seconds too. Ready? Go. How do you manage to teach an entire class without ever moving? <laughs> because I'm damn good. Uh, Which celebrity have you met so far that you were starstruck the most about? Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg, oh, that's a good oh, one. There you go, time's up. Oh, rats. That's what we're right. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg's a good one. Melissa, here's one for you. Which one of the dance moms do you think has the biggest butt? Well, this is a good question, because we see each other a lot, you know, naked. When? 
Oh my gosh, we always walk in each other's rooms when we get ready in the morning. We've heard all about your boobs, and, Melissa. Oh my gosh, I think Holly probably has the biggest butt. No but way. Holly's bottom is proportionate with the rest of her. Well, her derriere. Right. Kelly, when she buys all those dresses that she thinks look so fabulous on her, the skirt is up in the back and down in the front. She doesn't like have them hemmed correctly. Therefore, by dressing, Kelly has the biggest butt. I can't believe that's the one big question in the Twitter sphere right now. It's like, it's there's, crazy. There's the burning question out there. Who has the biggest butt? And that's not even that's not even an opinion question. There's like reality. I mean, we could whip out a tape measure. <laughs> Another burning question is, will we ever see Abby doing some choreography? Will we ever see you dancing? Well, I mean, that was like, my question is like, we see the end result in the dance competitions, and we see you coach the kids and make adjustments, but we never actually see you do the dance moves yourself. Well, when dancers are auditioning for professional work, yes. let's say here in LA or in New York, you could have somebody that is 75 years old choreographing right. the show or directing the show, and they say, Tom Bay, Padre, Glissa, Grand Jete. You better know what it is. If you have to right. have somebody get up and do it for you, you're screwed. I mean, I think that we should just get to the point where Abby just starts pointing at people and not even speaking at all. Wouldn't that be the yeah, greatest? Yeah, just telepathically. Yeah. It's like you have to know what I'm thinking. With like a laser, you know what? a laser pointer. Some kids would get it and some kids wouldn't. I'm here with the star of our show, Abby Lee Miller, dance mom Melissa, and super fan comedians Alec Mappa and Nadine Rajabi. <laughs> talking about all things Dance Moms. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Now look, dance has never been hotter. How much of that do you think, Abby, is due to the success of your show? All of it. I'll drink to that. I have so many parents and children telling me that the child started to dance because of our show. They watch the kids on TV, and they want to get up and do the routines. I believe that every child should dance for their posture, for their self-esteem to get in front of a mirror, to get in front of a live audience, to learn theater etiquette. They're learning all of those things in dance class. I want to go to dance class right I now. I do too. I want to do the grand jeté. Uh, Me too. Speaking of the grand jeté, why don't we take a look at some of Abby's favorite dances? We put together a selection of clips for you. Take a look. Please welcome Abby Lee Dance Company. What's the emo dance? I love this dance. I see the kite flying. The sky was so blue so good. that it wasn't <laughs> blue any longer. Every time that sky comes back into my mind, the colors shift, the blue gets bluer, and the horizon widens. When the words start speaking for the group dance, because there is no music, the girls start crawling around on the floor and like <laughs> punching themselves in the face. And I thought, well, OK. At least you're being the best that you can be. This is Lyrical Legion 9 to 10, Black Swan. I love the walkout. The walkout, the so confident nice. walkout. That's when Chloe was good. She's like Marley Matlin on Dancing with the Stars. She was. Oh. You see her look at her. <laughs> Yay! How are you not a nervous wreck watching that live in the moment that it happens? Can I just go back to, I see the kite flying? Um, first of all, I thought that I was in like a speakeasy in Williamsburg and wanted to just snap it out. It was so emo, I thought they were gonna start cutting right. at some point. I think somebody was cutting. Throughout, the bobs are like, what? <laughs> What's going on? And then Holly's the face like, great. Yes. The Helen Keller was fantastic because she committed. She went full death and full blind because yeah. she couldn't find her teddy bear and it was amazing. I love the topical dances, like the texting dance, 
you know, the dangers of texting. Mm -hmm. You should get even more political. Like, all the girls should play, like, missiles from North Korea. And <laughs> I could... I could come in as Kim Jong Un, that you know, and have amazing. a solo. You could do a dance about gluten allergies. Oh my you know, God! Kind of like the kids could be dressed up as yes. wheat and like <laughs> slices of bread and spaghetti, and and some of the, one of the kids oh could play like God. an intestinal tract that's being attacked by all the gluten. <laughs> You know, we could do get Lindsay the Lohan rights to that. Go into rehab again, and the girls could all be the rehab. They could all be the person. different mugshots of right. Lindsay Lohan. Right. <laughs> like through the years, like they each have like a number in That's front of them. That's kind of what the I see a kite routine is. The kids are all locked up. This show has so many levels. It's so good. It's like an onion. Oh my god, I love it. So guys, not everyone who watches the show is an expert. So Alec and Nadine have come up with a cheat sheet of dance moves so you can follow along. You guys want to take it from here? Okay, yeah, hit it, hit it. it. Roll them, roll the clips. That's the PK turn of death. I think it's called the spinner. The spinner, the spinner, Rooney. Oh, okay, this one oh, I call, I, I know this one. This one is called the chinny chin chin. That's mine! Oh, yes, uh, yeah, I love that. I was either gonna call it the chinny chin chin or the bottoms up. Either way, it's uncomfortable for everybody to watch. Right. <laughs> Reminds me of prom night. <laughs> So you're really tough. Have you ever seen a kid react to you in such a way like, oh, I was too tough on that kid? Yeah, but I think I'm a very good judge of character, and I know what child can take it and do it in private, right. and which kid I'm going to go after in front of 800 other people. So are your kids the kind of kids that can take criticism? Are they, they have thick skins? When Abby gives her a correction, Maddie fixes it right away. She doesn't take it personally and No, go she on. goes home and works on it. It's kind of crazy how she's a perfectionist. I would take it personally, because I'm a people pleaser. I'm like a bottomless pit of need aching to be loved. <laughs> so, like, if you criticize me, I would disintegrate. I would, like, turn into a pillar of salt. But aren't you two the Maddies? Yes, I yeah, am. Yeah, stuff. I'm a Maddie. Here, here's, here's, oh. here's to Maddie. Here's to Maddie. All right, so let's take a look at some fan favorite costumes. Here we go. One, two. Three, here's our bird. Here's, here's our, our bird. bird. <laughs> the bell. Is that a misfire or a favorite? I feel like the lion ate the bird in this one. <laughs> it's like... It's like a bird that's already been eaten. Right. Yeah. She's I'm drunk in the sorry. wash. <laughs> like the shrinky thing. Yeah, Remember she you got... Put them in the yeah, oven yeah. She smaller? heated up. She got a little smaller. She, oh, my God. That's amazing. Oh. Jetsons. It's Jetsons. It's, it's a little yeah. Judy Jetsons. Oh my it's gosh, she's so cute. I so can't cute. I can't, I can't. It's like Judy Jetson meets Hello Kitty. Right. It's from Back to the Future. Yeah. You're not even supposed to be seeing this. It's messing up the space time this continuum completely. <laughs> Oh, oh my God! Cindy uh, Lauper uh, called uh, and wants her hair back. Uh, <laughs> oh my God! It's the circle it's of life. life. Oh, it's Bollywood. But but ding ding. It's Bollywood. This this is a dance of your Indian, people. Indian Indian Indian. But but <laughs> ding ding. Ding dong ding dong ding dong. <laughs> Bollywood. There aren't uh, enough people in the group for Bollywood, by the uh, way. She's got more crooked every day. You do that whole dance. You choreograph this whole thing by just telling them what to do. Yeah. But wait. But they take class and they are trained in class. Oh, 1940s. They've got the chignon. I heard tell about it. I'm not that old. Wow, what do you think? How does it feel watching that? Can you remember all the work that you put into it? Yes, it's exhausting. I know the costumes vary, but what do they range from? Costumes range anywhere from street clothing that I went to the mall and bought right. for 50 bucks a kid up to 350 bucks a kid. We are doing new routines every single week. So when you see the kids go to competition and they're competing against other studios, mm -hmm. those kids at those other studios have been working on those routines for months. Sometimes the costume isn't about the money, but about how quickly we can get them done. We get the music on Tuesday, and Friday, we're on a bus going somewhere. Wow. Holy so mackerel. when I sketch the costume is after I've heard the music, and I know what the theme is going to be. I'm here with Abby Lee Miller, the star of Dance Moms, Melissa, comedian superfans Alec Mappa, and Nadine Rajabi. Hashtag and this is Dance Moms Chatter. Yeah. All right, so one of the huge topics that fans love to talk about on the chat sites is Abby and why we never get to see her showing the girls moves. So you think you've seen it all on Dance Moms? Think again. Take a look at this. 
The world was mine to give. My hands I must say, I'm surprised that Abby's up. Abby must really care about this routine. She is actually up and out of her chair. You don't understand. I figure it all out ahead of time before they get in there. And hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Stroll, two, three, four, grand plie. Wow. Shot it. Abby is funny looking when she tries to do hip hop. Cross, Shanae, turn, bevel, kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I love this one. Dig it. <laughs> Look. Oh, here is Abby's going to do her drag queen walk. She's revving up from head to toe. Mama's in the house. She's got to oh, scrub herself, Lord. pull down her shirt. Look, she's got her foot beveled. Oh, she's got, oh, oh the head's, head's gone. gone. Oh, my God. The torpedoes are out. <laughs> Abby loves herself a drag queen dance. Oh, Lord, help oh, us all. watch out. Everybody get out your mental scrub brush. OK, here she goes. Oh, my God. I hope Woo. she didn't do that for her oh, date. See? Oh, the wrists oh, are uh -oh. limp. Oh, oh, gross. <laughs> Whatever that move is. Here it comes. Do you see Holly's face? <laughs> oh, my god. I think she thinks she looks good doing that stuff. I don't think that looks good. <laughs> what? 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 Thank you. She's marking it. She's marking the routine, right? Oh. Oh, are you looking to some music? Always. <laughs> well, like you're having a good time. Hello. Hello. Ah. I think that's one of the big things of the show is that you get so much accomplished without ever moving all that much. <laughs> it's like if there was a cooking show where somebody stood off to the side and said, a pinch of salt. Right. Add some pepper. <laughs> Easy with the coriander. And somebody was able to prepare this gourmet meal. I mean, that's what it's like. It's like the IKEA of dancing. <laughs> Almost like you could just diagram it and they do like it. Like you it's just shout out the instructions yeah. and these kids do whatever you want. She does that and people just do things for her. I delegate. She's the owner. She's allowed to. I right? delegate. That's right. Yeah, but it goes beyond the dance studio, right? I've been doing this for 33 years. I got a down pat. It's her world. We just live in it. Alec and Nadine, I want to thank you guys for being our guests. You're welcome. Before you go, I want to know, do you have any questions that you want to ask Abby? Yes. Are you moving to Los Angeles? Because I want you to be my neighbor. <laughs> she wants to move to Los Angeles. What about you? My burning question is, how would you rate me and put me in your pyramid based on today? Oh, I think you'd make the middle tier. But then again, I haven't met your mother. That's true. Uh... Nadine and Alec, it's been fantastic having you. I'm Jeff Collins, and this is Dance Moms Chatter signing off. So join us next time for more dish and much more drama from Dance Moms. <laughs>